Hello all my beautiful little unicorns and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time that you're on my channel, my name is Vanessa Samina and I'd like to welcome you into the fam. You guys, this pick a card tarot reading is so special and highly personalized. I created four individual little love potions for each group and this pick a card reading is also the debut and first appearance ever of the Below the Surface Oracle deck. This amazing ocean themed deck will be released released in April of 2023 and the links to get on the pre-orders list is below and don't worry you'll get to see the cards during the prediction and I'll also introduce you to the deck the box the journal and the guidebook at the end of the intro so my lovely babies of the zodiac in order to figure out exactly who your soulmate is what they look like what their job and occupation is when you will meet them I have prepared four groups that you can choose from during the first part of this reading and once you have two tuned into and received this first part of your prediction, you get to scroll back down to the timestamps, which are in the description box as well as pinned to the top of the comment section. Click your zodiac sign. I would recommend that you watch your sun sign as well as your moon sign, and you'll be fast forwarded to the relevant sign of the zodiac in order to add on to the first part of your reading. So this soulmate reading is really like a free personal reading for you that's highly interactive as you are creating your very own reading which is tailored to your birth chart. Okay guys, let's get into it. Allow me to introduce you to the four groups that you get to choose from for part one of your prediction. Group number one corresponds to the below the surface oracle deck as well as this baby blue love potion. Group number two corresponds to the Amenti oracle deck as well as this gorgeous blood red love potion. Group number three corresponds to the pastel journey tarot deck as well as this stunning purple iridescent love potion. And group number four corresponds to the Divine Feather Messenger Oracle, as well as this mesmerizing green butterfly love potion. The timestamps to all four of these groups, as well as each sign of the zodiac, can be found below in the description box, as well as pinned to the top of the comment section. And if your intuition is a little shaky, I highly recommend that you download my free PDF. This downloadable is also linked in the description box. It comes with helpful tips on how to pick the right card for yourself every single single time and I also have a new video format on my channel which I will leave the link to below it is called truth or tale during which I tell you unbelievable stories of which some are completely true and some are completely made up and you find out at the end of the video which story was truth and which one was tale in a way it's like intuition training and sharpening your psychic abilities as well as having fun with some true crime mixed in so for all of you who want a sneak peek on the below the surface or Oracle deck. So many of you have already gotten on the pre-orders list to secure your deck so you can see what the actual deck will look like because so far I've only had mock-ups. Then just continue watching the intro and if you're interested in securing this gorgeous deck, I promise seeing this deck IRL right now, you're not going to be able to resist adding this to your collection. For more on that, simply keep watching and to all of my gorgeous groups and signs of the zodiac, I will catch you at the click of your timestamp. So I would officially like to introduce Introduce you to the below the surface oracle deck guidebook and journal it comes in this gorgeous thick and heavy collector's magnet box and as you can see there are a ton of sparkly little details throughout this deck open this baby up shall we so here we have more iridescent sparkly details as well as some affirmations that are just sprinkled throughout the deck of course you've got your full color guidebook that explains each and every card we've got some iridescent edges going on here and this is what awaits you within the guidebook so we've of course got our introduction I've also put some of my favorite spreads for you to use in here and of course each and every card with its explanation and what makes this deck so special is that it not only contains a full color guidebook but it also comes with a below the surface journal where you can write down all of your thoughts and findings as you're working with your new Oracle deck and the box comes with this beautiful high quality foam tray as well as a little ribbon to help you extract your cards. So here we have the backs of the cards with koi fish as well as whales. Maybe you guys remember I did a poll on my Instagram where I asked you to choose between the koi and the whale and it was actually a tie so I ended up combining both of these in order to create the backs of these cards and these are the sides of the cards. I mean don't they just look so below the surface almost like the depth of the ocean. So let's go through some of these cards. They 
They all have the gorgeous iridescent details, of course. And these cards are made of the highest quality and they're super easy to shuffle. And I even created them in a custom size that are comfortable to hold and to work with. You guys, it's all in the details. So when you order the Below the Surface Oracle deck, you get all of these things. You get your guidebook, you get the box, the cards, the journal, really the complete set with everything that you could need, especially if you're a beginner, because these cards are very easy to use and understand. And if you're a fan of the ocean and all living creatures within the ocean, trust me, you are going to absolutely love this deck. So the Below the Surface Oracle deck is currently on pre-order as its official release is going to be in April, but the pre-order spots are filling up pretty quickly. So if you want to secure a copy of one of these decks for yourself, as I don't know how many will be left at the official launch, make sure that you use my link below to get it during the pre-order sale as you also get this deck at a special discount during pre-order season. I would also like to send a huge shout out to Anna, who is my gorgeous illustrator that helped me bring this project to life. It's been more than a year in the making and I'm so proud to finally be able to show you. So now that that's all done, let's get into your readings. The timestamps are below and I'll catch you during your group's prediction. Hello group number one and welcome to the first part of your soulmate pick a card tarot reading. You chose the unreleased below the surface oracle deck as well as this gorgeous baby blue potion. Here we go. This is a your love potion. It has some iridescent vibes to it as well. Let's just shake it up. Oh, it is so gorgeous, group number one. Amazing and fantastic choice. However, now let's move into your reading to figure out precisely who your soulmate is, shall we? So let's get into it. I am so excited to debut this gorgeous oracle deck. And if you love this deck and you want to get on the pre-orders list because there will only be a very limited quantity of this deck that will be arriving in April, then make sure that you check the link in the description box. So now let's get into it. First up for you, we've got the Parrotfish, which is all about protecting your assets. I see here that your soulmate is someone who is really good when it comes to being protective over family and assets. They're the type of person who would never be careless with what they've worked hard for, and they would also never be careless with what you've worked hard for, group number one. So your soulmate is someone who is very responsible, very reliable when it comes to finances, and they are financially literate as well. So they don't let anyone take them for a fool. They don't deal with crooks. They don't engage in any type of behavior that may jeopardize the stability that they have created with you or for themselves. So they're definitely someone who you can take very seriously when it comes to building a life. Next up, we've got the Black Tip Reef Shark for you. So in the Black Tip Reef Shark, I can see here that your soul soulmate is definitely someone who knows when superficial is enough. Your soulmate does not give everybody the time of day. They are definitely an introvert. They stay in shallow waters most of the time with most people. They're definitely the type of person who understands that no matter how often you explain something to someone, if you're talking to a person who is convinced that they're right or who doesn't really want to understand a new concept, you're not going to get through. And I definitely see here that your soulmate is someone who gets that. Your soulmate is someone who isn't going to waste their time and energy trying to convince someone otherwise. Next up, we've got the mantis shrimp. Now, your soulmate is someone who has been through a lot, okay? And they're not going to give up, especially when it comes to creating a life that they're proud of, especially when it comes to their careers. They never give up. They never back down. They are not the type of person who will ever let another human being tell them that they're dreaming too big or that any of their aspirations are too outlandish, your soulmate group number one is someone who understands that they can achieve anything that they put their mind towards and they will also not give up when it comes to pursuing you. And if you decide to just have small talk with them because for some reason you're still in the healing phase or maybe you were hurt before so it's hard
hard for you to trust a new person with your heart, group number one, which I completely understand. But I see here that your soulmate is someone who will fight for your attention and your affection. Next up, we've got strength. So strength is pretty similar to the mantis shrimp, I'd say. And I want you to know here within the strength card that your soulmate is someone who has experienced a lot of things that have made them stronger. So they've most likely had a pretty challenging upbringing. They've had to be grown up and resilient from an early age. And your soulmate is overall someone whom you can count on to be strong and protective and there for you. They're also a healer is what I see here. So they may work in the medical field they may be a doctor, a nurse, maybe a psychologist or a psychiatrist. They're someone who has this spiritual gift of healing and they have a desire to share it. So there's something that they're capable of doing for other people that is their main kind of job or journey in this lifetime. And I definitely see here that they're either in this job right now or they're aiming to switch jobs so that they can really live out that healer energy that they were born and gifted with. So group number one, do you know that your person is someone who cares about others and definitely wants to embrace that on their career path as well. I see here within the harp that this brings them great happiness and there's someone who you can count on when you're feeling down and when you yourself feel like you need a little bit of healing and a little bit of extra loving. And now I also see why we've got this baby blue love potion for you because a baby blue love potion is representative of a very calm and kind of nurturing energy and we've also got little blue roses in here it might be difficult for you to see those as we've got so many other things going on but there are these little rosy bits in your potion so group number one with blue being a very calming and trustworthy type of color it makes complete sense as to why your soulmate would be this type of person. Next up, we've got the haystack. So I see here within the haystack that your soulmate is someone who believes in karma. There's someone who strongly believes that you will reap what you have sown. So they try to treat people in a kind manner. They try to treat people in a manner that is healing, that is caring, and that they would like to receive in return. That's one thing that I see here with in the haystack, the harp, and the healer. But they also know where they need to draw certain lines. I see that with the black tip reef shark because some people will just take, take, and take again, okay? Not everybody is worthy of making sure that you are very kind and generous and caring and giving. Some people will still not realize that you're doing a lot for them and they'll just continue to take and complain. And I see here that your soulmate is someone who understands this and is very selective of their inner circle. So they're not someone who has a lot of friends. They don't have a lot of female or male friends that they hang out with. And especially once they're in a committed relationship, they are even less so a social person and they are more devoted and committed to their professional life as a healer. Next up, we've got the Sodalite. So they are a truth teller. Your soulmate is not someone who will go behind your back and do something that they know would upset you. Your soulmate is not someone who lies. Your soulmate is someone who is honest and trustworthy. And I do see here within the Sodalite that they're the type of person who doesn't cheat and isn't the type of person to have a wandering eye either. They don't have shiny object syndrome where they're looking at every cute girl or cute guy that walks past. They are not impressed by material items. They're the type of person who is impressed by resilience and inner strength and true kindness that is completely free, right? Next up, we've got the pyrite. So I see here that the more kind of successful your soulmate has become the less they've actually cared about money the pyrite shows me here that your soulmate is someone who is financially doing well they are successful we spoke about that here within the parrotfish and them being capable of protecting their assets and they would never be careless with what they've worked hard for but at the same time it's like they've come to this point where they've made more money than they ever expected and then they realized money really is 
isn't everything. And at some point, it really does wear off. The joy of making a lot of money does kind of dull. And that's where I see within the rainbow obsidian that they're working on themselves. They're working on healing their hearts because they definitely have childhood trauma, which is most likely what pushed them to be someone who is so ambitious because they grew up in a household where they had to be a grown up and take so much responsibility so early on. They're the type of person who has to do a lot of inner work, a lot of healing later down the line. They believe that this is their responsibility, hence why we've got the haystack within the reading, because they don't want to let out difficult emotions onto other people. They don't want to lash out on others just because they're still in the healing phase, but they definitely understand here that it's a lot of work, and in the epidote, I see that they know they have to go deeper. While they may be able to stay in shallow waters with other people, which could be an indication that they have a kind of avoidant or insecure attachment type here within the black tip reef shark. They understand that in order to ever really let someone in and in order to ever form a deeper connection, they need to go deeper with themselves and get to know themselves so they even know what they are presenting to another person or capable of giving to another person. So there's a lot of work here for your soulmates, group number one, but they are definitely into it. They're taking their time to work through things and it's important for them that they grow as a person because in Jar of Dreams, I see that they still have so many dreams and aspirations in their jar of dreams so to say that they would like to explore release and go after group number one your person is someone who thinks and dreams big and they don't want for anything or anyone to stop them from accomplishing the most in this lifetime yes they've got goals this is like our guides and our angels are right here within this reading, group number one. Goal setting showing up at this point in the prediction is very telling. It speaks volumes. And I definitely want you to know here that your soulmate is someone who is very focused. They've got their eye on the prize and they write their goals down, which puts them into that like 3% of people who actually writes down goals and is also a lot more likely to accomplish those goals because they write the goals down, because they take the time to really get clear on what it is that they want out of life and where it is that they are going. So your person definitely knows what's next. They definitely know what they want to accomplish and they're not shy to write it down and make it a real thing. Next up, we've got the high heart chakra. So within the high heart chakra, I see here that your soulmate is someone who once they've connected, it's very hard for them to disconnect. So it may take a lot of time for your soulmate to warm up group number one, but once they've really decided that you're the one and they're invested in the relationship, relationship, it's like almost impossible for you to shake them off. That's one thing that I can see here within the high heart chakra. And it's almost as though you have a completely different relationship with them once they've decided that you're the one versus prior to that moment. Because once they have decided on that, they will be able to open up to you in such a more deep and profound manner than they ever have. And it's almost like you will have a second, completely different, deeper relationship with your soulmate once it is clear that you're embarking on this journey of life together. In the Miriam, I can see here that they're someone who is very forgiving they see the light in everything and they understand that if they do not want any boundaries to be there they don't like you don't need to have any boundaries within your relationship love has no boundaries distance is just something that's creates boundaries in your head what really creates boundaries is silence and lack of communication so here within the miriam i can definitely see here that your soulmate is someone who actively decides what boundaries they want to set and within soul expansion I can see that they're the type of person who understands that there is a connection between how much they let you in and how deep the relationship can go and thrive and flourish. They're starting to understand that 
the kind of level of trust that they're willing to put into the relationship and that they're willing to give you or trust you with, that is the result of the connection because your soulmate has been in relationships prior to you. You're not going to be their first relationship, but they realized that the less they actually showed their emotions, the less they put themselves out there, the less, of course, the connection was even able to survive or thrive. So they're trying to do things differently with you. Your soulmate has definitely decided that they want to step up for you. I see here within Krishna that they are so devoted and that they also trust their spiritual guidance, which is leading them to you, and that they're committed. And you're going to recognize their commitment. You will recognize their unconditional love and the fact that they want to be with you. It's not going to be a question. But that's the thing about your soulmate, group number one. It's never going to be something where you have to ask yourself whether this person is into you or not, as they're going to show you their devotion through actions. Next up, we've got Odin. So within Odin, I can see that your soulmate is someone who has these psychic abilities. They're someone who follows their intuition. They also just see the truth for what it is. They're not the type of person who makes up like fictitious stories within their head. If you tell them that you are into them, that is what they will believe and that is what they will go with. And vice versa, if you tell them that you are not interested, that is also what they are going to take as your word. They don't like to play games. Your soulmate is someone who craves and loves clarity. And they are overall a very honest as well as straightforward type of person. We definitely also have a lot of features here about your person that have to do with you know head coverings so them potentially wearing some sort of scrub like we've got here within the healer or a lot of hats think for example baseball hats or other types of hats just something on their head and furthermore we definitely also have like a good healthy tan to them everything except krishna points to a little bit of tan skin for your soulmate and your person, so tanned for them. If they're a very fair-skinned person, a tan is going to look different than if they've got olive color or darker skin. But overall, they like to spend time outside, and they're also someone who most likely has a little longer hair than the average in their field and the average co-worker and person who they hang out with. So they have a bit more of a free-spirited type of look to them, group number one, and they're the type of person who tries to not judge others because as we spoke about within the haystack, they strongly believe in karma and they strongly believe that what goes around comes around. So all of my beautiful souls of group number one, this is the reading that I received for you and I really, really hope that you enjoyed this first part of your prediction. Leave a little shark emoji below to let me and others know that you made it to the end of part one of your reading, but now don't forget to scroll down into the description box and click your zodiac signs timestamp in order to figure out what your soulmate's zodiac sign is when you'll meet them and a lot more specific information about your soulmate. So I'll catch you during the second part of your reading. Hello, group number two, and welcome to your soulmate pick a card reading part one. So in this first part of your reading, we're going to figure out exactly who they are, what their job is, maybe some things about their looks and their overall vibe. And then in part two, which is based on your zodiac sign, which you receive after watching this first part of your reading, we will delve into their zodiac sign, when you'll meet them, and lots of other numerological little details. So you chose the Amenti Oracle deck as well as this beautiful blood red love potion. Look at that group number two. Ooh, I just love the mystical vibe of this. Do you know what this reminds me of group number two? The Cure from Vampire Diaries. If you know, you know. But now let's get into your soulmate reading, shall we? Let's figure out everything about this person and your relationship with them, how they feel about you, when you're going to meet them. 
you know the spiel group number two. Let's get into your prediction. We've got I am forgiving as well as I am accepting. So your soulmate is someone who is both of these things. They're very forgiving and accepting. They're completely fine with the fact that you've got flaws, they've got flaws, and as you age, of course, your external facade is going to change as well. And they're someone who is super forgiving when it comes to mistakes. They're the type of person that may even forgive little lies. They're the type of person who is very accepting of the fact that maybe when put under pressure, you may have told them some half truths or you may have had to tell them a different story while getting to know them in order to protect yourself, right? If you're, for example, going through legal proceedings or you've got a very challenging relationship with your family, that's something you maybe don't want to air out on the first date with your soulmate, especially when you feel that special connection. But later down the line, when you confess to them, they completely understand and they are so accepting of you taking your time and just overall understanding you and your viewpoint, as long as they, of course, don't feel like you are deliberately trying to deceive. Next up, we've got, I praise the goddess and the god. They are a deeply spiritual person, maybe even religious. I just want you to know that this is someone with whom you're on the same wavelength when it comes to higher powers and when it comes to understanding the fact that there seems to be something out here that is greater than each and every one of us. And we all have different ways of describing what this may be. For some, it's God. For others, it's the universe. For someone else, it's angels or maybe just planetary energies. So do know here that your soulmate is someone who is accepting of all spiritual and religious beliefs, and they themselves are strongly rooted in their faith and in their spirituality. I see here within the Four of Swords that the person who you're going to end up with, the soulmate person who's going to be in your life, is someone who has been hurt many times, and now they just want stability. The number four is a number of stability and routine, and as as you can see here, we've got the Four of Swords and the sword that's kind of pointed at them. So I want you to know that they're really done with games. Your soulmate is someone who has been burned, hurt, deceived and lied to, and still they are forgiving, still they are accepting, still they have faith that they will find the right person. So just this just says a lot about the character of your soulmate. And your soulmate is a reflection of you, group number two. So that says a lot about you. Here within the hermit, I can see that they are definitely kind of a hermit, so to say, which means they're a loner. They're the type of person who's very introverted. They like to be by themselves. When there are too many people People around this is how they look distraught stressed out they don't like that they like their alone time and their space and they would take an evening of chilling at home with you having like your favorite food ordering and takeout watching Netflix or a documentary listening to music they would take that any day over going out and partying because your soulmate is just not really the type of person who's in that phase in their life anymore They've left that behind. They were definitely a little bit of a wild child at an earlier point, which is why they are so accepting and forgiving because they understand everyone goes through different phases and they wouldn't want other people to always compare them to their old self or to never allow them to just grow and be different. So they don't want to inflict that on others. You know, when you have those friends or those people in your life who say, oh, you changed so much. Well, remember when you were younger, you used to drink so much. You used to get drunk. You used to smoke. You used to hang out with this person. You used to like bad boys. You used to like nerds. Whatever it is, they always want to take you back to that place. And it's like, man, can you just let someone grow? Can you you just let a girl, a boy, a unicorn just grow some wings and fly and just progress. Like the whole point of life is change. The whole point is evolution. Like, of course, I'm not the same as when we knew each other 10 years ago or five years ago. Of course, I've evolved since those old times. And it's just this person doesn't like to be around others who have this kind of surprised, shocked mindset of, oh my God, you've changed so much. Your soulmate tries to avoid those types of interactions at all costs. Because I see here within soul expansion that your soulmate is the type of person who wants to understand the connections between all things and they want to constantly be leveling up. 
they want to be a completely different person like three months from now than they are today and not in a manner of not taking responsibility or accountability but more in the sense of leveling up learning growing just becoming a better fuller version of themselves i see here within a lord shiva that the person who your soulmate is is someone who rises up always they honor their inner force and they're the type of person who tries to work with the universe they try to work with whatever it is that's been given to them so their struggles like for example a difficult childhood or being bullied in school to them they've just been prepared for bigger things in their future they've just been prepared for other challenges in life that they will now be able to overcome more easily than someone who has never experienced any type of adversity because one thing about adversity is that yeah what doesn't kill you doesn't always make you stronger it can make you weaker now let's not let's not get that mixed up let's be very honest here you can get weaker when something hurts you or harms you but you can also develop strength you can definitely also start to callous your mind in a sense of not allowing any hardships to get you down and learning how to get back up knowing that when you're knocked down it's just a matter of time till you come back to this place of planting new seeds your soulmate is someone who is super ambitious and who's most likely going to want to plant lots of seeds with you so think for example starting businesses together think for example planting seeds for ideas that you want to bring to the relationship or marriage one day i definitely see here within the day you plant the seed that what they're going for is prosperity we've got the number 26 within this card Two plus six gives us that base vibration of eight, and eight is a number of abundance. It's a very lucky number, especially in the east as well. So I want you to know here in the day you plant the seed that they're in it for the long haul and in know your worth. This kind of shows as we've got these coins, which are of course symbolic of earthly abundance, but know your worth also resonates with the fact that you understand your self-worth. You understand the fact that you owe it to yourself to do the best that you can and create a life where you're not worrying about how to pay the bills. And that's what your soulmate is all about. Also know here we've got the number 24 in Know Your Worth. And as mentioned before, we've got 26 in the day you plant the seed. So the number two and the number two being multiplied is what we've got here within these cards. So the number two is a number of duality. It's a number of finding balance. And for 24, we've got the base vibration two plus four, which equals six, which is a number of victory, but also a family. So this person definitely wants to create a strong foundation so you can have a family with them and so that you can create a future with this individual. Ooh, multiple streams. So your soulmate is really in their Bag, group number two they are really all about financial gains right now they're about their career they're about creating financial freedom having a lot of assets in their life that generates revenue or even passive income semi-passive income whatever you'd like to call it because nothing is truly passive right you always have to put in a little bit of work for any type of financial reward but that's not what matters here oh by the way we've also got the number 48 again the number two and numbers which we can achieve by multiplying two it's reoccurring so i definitely want you to know here within multiple streams that your person is always learning and informing themselves of how to create more streams of revenue and income and they're trying to build as many streams as possible to create as much financial safety as they can for future family let's also add some runes into your reading group number two at this point so let's see what your guides have for us i'm just going to randomly choose a rune all the way from the bottom okay so let's decipher what we've got here let me first zoom in for you so here within this rune we've actually got manas which corresponds to the letter m and manas actually means mankind friends it also corresponds to culture and all things kind of pop culture as well so i want you to know here that your soulmate is someone who knows everything that goes on when it comes to the news pop culture they're very up to date so they're probably like your new news outlet your personal news station let's add another rune 
Okay, so let's decipher what we've got here. You know, it's so funny because <laughs> this rune actually corresponds to Tiwa's and <laughs> to learn this rune, I always called it in my head like the little chicken foot because for some reason it reminds me of what a footprint of a chicken would look like, like in the sand or something or in the mud. I don't know why, you guys. But Tiwa's is all about justice, leadership, and authority. Tiwa's corresponds to the letter T, of course, and and for your soulmates, it's definitely giving the vibes of justice, of justice when it comes to humanity, of your person working in the legal system or in the government, of your soulmate being someone who is a humanitarian and who cares a lot for the good of the collective. While they are definitely benefiting from capitalism, what they want to do is actually be a leader that puts back into the community. So for them, it's important to do really well so they can show what it's like to not just do well for yourself, but also also to reinvest in big community projects, in businesses that pay their workers fair wages and that actually really shows respect and honor for labor that is being put in. So next up, we've got the adventure in. I see here that your soulmate is someone who is super lucky, okay? They are a very fortunate human being. Somehow, everything always works out within their favor. The adventure in is a stone of good fortune. So if you're looking for a stone to wear that brings luck and good fortune, the adventure in is definitely the way to go. Also, the citron is a really good one. I'm wearing citron right now. So here we've got a little citron ring and I've got another one right here. I'm really obsessed with citron. I believe this one is citron too. But anyways, group number two, those are the type of stones that you're going to want to wear in order to attract not only abundance, but also good luck. Next up, we've got the Amazonite. So the Amazonite shows me here that your soulmate is someone who's a little bit possessive, okay? They need to learn to loosen their grip, but maybe you also kind of like that group number two. Maybe you're a little bit turned on by that. When someone is a little bossy, when someone is a little dominant, when you've got someone who has a little bit of this zaddy vibe, if you know what I mean. So I definitely definitely see that they are learning to loosen their grip. They are definitely learning to not overthink and overanalyze. So they have been hurt in the past, which makes a lot of sense as to why they're trying to relearn this. That is, of course, not an excuse for any type of mildly jealous behavior. However, it's definitely something they're aware of. So it's not a huge issue in your connection with your soulmate. It's just something to note and to maybe kind of remind yourself of when you're dealing with them. So if they ask you where you're going, maybe just voluntarily add, add that extra information just to make them feel a little more safe, a little more secure. Like for example, if they ask you who you're going out with, just tell them you're going with this friend to this place and you think you'll be back at this time. Or if they ask you, hey, who are you on the phone with? Just, just elaborate a little bit more, not because they're asking you to or they're like feverishly jealous but just to calm their mind and their anxiety a little bit more because yeah your soulmate has been through a lot and in order for this connection to work there has to be some effort from both sides so next up we've got the orange dotted tusk fish with the number 20 hmm another number with two being the base or one of the more important figures in it. So thinking outside of the box is something that your soulmate does effortlessly. And another thing about your soulmate is they still have so many hidden talents to discover and so many things that they're exceptionally good at. And by the way, this is the below the surface deck. This is like the first time debuting it in a video. Yes, it is still on pre-order. It will officially be released in April this year. So make sure that you get yourself one of these decks. I showed it during the intro of the video. I have a segment where you see the box, the guidebook, and the journal. That's all included in the Below the Surface Oracle deck, okay? You receive so many little goodies when you order this deck. All of these goodies are part of the deal, and the quality and attention to detail 
is this is the best deck I've done so far. And I say this every time and my decks just get better and better. Group number two, trust me, like all of the five star reviews prove that. And you will not be disappointed by the below the surface Oracle deck. I assure you this will be your new favorite deck in your collection and your biggest tool for growth as it comes with a journal that you can use with your cards, which I've never seen any Oracle deck come with for free, right, within the deck package. But anyways, let's move further into your reading. Next up, we've got the Bottle Nose Dolphin. So within the Bottle Nose Dolphin, we've got the number three now, actually, which is a number of communication. It is a number of having a good time, of socializing, celebrating. And I see here that your soulmate is someone who likes to celebrate accomplishments. They don't like to party just to party. They like to celebrate when they feel like they've accomplished something, when they feel Feel like there is something worth celebrating that's when they throw a party that's when they'll have a glass of wine or a glass of champagne that's when they'll order their favorite dessert that's when they'll go on vacation they are someone who is pretty disciplined they can be a little hard on themselves so they tend to only celebrate and socialize when there's reason to or when they feel as though there's something worthy of celebration so group number two your soulmate is also someone who doesn't like to celebrate their own birthday nevertheless they're super flattered if you do anything for them on their birthday that's something that makes them so happy so group number two we're at the end of the first part of your reading if you've made it all the way to this point make sure that you leave a little money bag emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you were here and that you received part one of your reading so in part two of your prediction we're going to get into nitty-gritty details such as your soulmate's zodiac sign when you'll meet them other little numerological things, placements within their birth chart. So scroll down into the description box or to the top of the comment section, click the timestamp of your zodiac sign and you'll be fast forwarded to part two of your soulmate reading. So I'll catch you over there. Hello, group number three, and welcome to the first part of your soulmate reading. You chose the Pastel Journey Tarot deck in connectivity to this beautiful purple love potion. Look at these little iridescent sparkly bits that we have in here. Let's give it a little shake. All right, group number three, now let's get into your soulmate prediction. In this first part, we're going to talk all things looks, their vibe, their job, everything that you need to know on the surface before we delve even more deeply into your soulmate prediction. During part two of this reading, which you get to pick at the end of this first part, so that will be based on your zodiac sign. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's figure out exactly who your soulmate is on an external plane. So first up, we've got the Seven of Wands as well as the Ten of Swords. So I see some highly phallic energy, which means very masculine energy, because both the Suit of Wands and the Suit of Swords are masculine symbols. Now, the Seven of Wands shows me here that the person who your soulmate is is someone who is very protective. There's someone who isn't afraid of anything, and they're really brave. And the Ten of Swords shows me me that there's someone who is really over small talk and meaningless relationships. Your soulmate has definitely kind of graduated from their party era and party phase to a space of more maturity and a space of actually wanting to build something for the long term with another individual. So that's what I see here within the Seven of Wands and the Ten of Swords. Next up, we've got the Ace of Wands. So they have a lot of great ideas about what they want to do moving forward creatively speaking and also in their passionate lives also when it comes to their love lives so they have an idea of what they want for themselves when it comes to family planning they know where they want to live they know whether they want to be married or not they've got things figured out so your soulmate is not one of those people who's going to say to you, oh, let's just see where things go. I'm not really sure what I want. I'm not really sure where I'm going, blah, blah, blah. Like that is absolutely not what your soulmate would say to you. So group number three, if you're currently dealing with someone who seems to have no idea about what it is that they want, let me just move my foliage over here. Um, if you're dealing with someone who seems to have no clue what they want out of life or relationships, then that is not your soulmate. And honestly, you deserve to be with a soulmate. You deserve to be with someone 
who brings clarity to the table. Next up, we've got strength. So we briefly spoke in the Seven of Wands about the fact that they are fearless. They're not afraid to stand up for themselves and other people and fight back if necessary. So I do also see here in connectivity to the strength card that your soulmate is someone who has gone through some trauma. Maybe they even have PTSD from certain events that they've experienced, but that has actually made them strong and courageous. That is not something that has made them weaker whatsoever. I see that they've come out of difficult situations as a leader and they like to take charge of situations. So your soulmates group number three is definitely someone who likes to step into their leadership role. They like to be in that divine masculine role, if you know what I mean, like being the person who isn't afraid to give other people orders and advice and say where a project is gonna go next. They're just overall a great leader that other people adore and other people trust because they didn't get to this place of adoration and of public recognition by chance or you know, through family connections or anything like that. It wasn't luck, it was no coincidence and it also wasn't handed to them. And that's why your soulmate is someone who is trusted by other people from all walks of life because one thing that everyone undeniably respects is hard work and when someone started from the bottom and got here, got where your soulmate is. Next up, we've got the Rodanite. Now in the Rodanite, I can see that your soulmate is someone who is trying to work on their forgiveness. They're trying to work on not holding grudges when they've been wronged or cheated on. Your soulmate is definitely someone who has had to decipher a few things or get to the bottom of some mysteries that they really didn't want to get to the bottom to um, in past relationships. So being lied to, being cheated on, these types of things have made it hard for them to trust, but they are determined to turn a new leaf and to just overall embrace the fact that yes, they've been hurt, but at the same time, that also gives opportunity for a new person to come in and to prove that, hey, there are still real people who are truthful, who will not cheat, who will not lie or deceive, and there is still hope out here. And once you find that person, you should hold on to them because that's something that isn't easy to come by. And your soulmate is someone who has learned that the hard way, but it's setting them up for success in a long-term relationship because they'll know what they have. Next up, we've got the Carnelian. Now in the Carnelian, I can see that your soulmate is someone who is super creative. They love to do things with their hands as well. They're a very handy type of person. The Carnelian also shows me that they're very creative behind closed doors. I see that in connectivity to the Ace of Wands. They are a passionate lover. They are someone who is quite possibly a little kinky and likes to try some new things. And they're not afraid to also laugh in intimate situations when things um, kind of happen that are unplanned or there are some clumsy moments. Your soulmate is someone who doesn't take things super seriously when it comes to having fun. But I do see here within the clear courts that They've got this duality. On one hand, they don't take things too seriously. If, you know, something clumsy happens, such as hanging out, going for dinner, and one of you smiles and you've got something stuck between your teeth or something like that, that's what I mean by clumsy. They don't take those things too seriously. They laugh it off. They like to have fun. And they know that we're all just human, right? But your soulmate is definitely someone who needs clarity when it comes to relationships. They don't like situationships. They don't like any uncertainties when it comes to their attachments that they've got in life. So that's where you've got to be real with them and upfront. And your soulmate is really not someone who you should engage with romantically speaking unless you're ready for commitment and i'm talking long-term commitment let's move further into your reading i'm going to use the below the surface oracle deck i have been working on this deck for over a year and i'm so proud to actually be holding it in my hands at this point if you want to see in detail what this deck comes with as you not only get the cards but you also get the guidebook and a journal and of course the collector's box which is super everything super high quality 
quality and well made and just look at how unique the sides of these cards are like they're even more beautiful in real life and just all of the little holographic details the timestamps are below in the description box so you can take a closer look at this deck and also the link to getting on the pre-orders list is there because you guys the pre-orders are already filling up and when the deck actually launches in april i don't know how many pieces i will actually be able to sell that I haven't already sold on pre-order, but let's move further into your reading. Next up, we've got the Ambon Damselfish. So I can see that your soulmate is someone who isn't afraid to use their voice. They understand that their opinion matters. This goes beautifully with leadership as well, and your person just being 100% certain that what they have to say is important and it matters and they don't need to shy away from being open and honest and i see here within the koi that they like to also tell a lot of jokes your person is a very funny person as already mentioned they don't take much of life too seriously except commitment that's where they kind of have a little bit of a pet peeve they don't like uncertainty when it comes to commitment so i do want you to know here that they are a jokester they're very good with their words and they are overall someone with whom you're always going to laugh and have an amazing time with Next up, we've got faith. So within faith, I can see that your soulmate is someone who is very calm. They trust in the good in themselves, but also in others. They have a very secure type of attachment type, which means that they're the type of person who can love genuinely and pretty freely in relationships. They are not overly jealous or insecure, and they see the light in the world. They understand that, of course, there are bad situations, bad actions that have been taken in the history of humanity, but that doesn't mean that the world overall is a bad, dark, scary place. And I do want you to know here within Serapis Bay that they choose to move above the darkness, to rise above the darkness. They choose to move into their truest self, which is just a person that is filled with love and gratitude for the opportunity to have this lifetime and to be here in this day and age and have all the opportunities that comes with living in this day and age. So I definitely want you to know that your person, your soulmate is someone who is just very grateful and who focuses on rising above darkness rising above negativity and rather than staying in a depressed slump they choose to see things from the bright side i see here within the yoke that one thing that your soulmate doesn't like is when they feel tied down that is something that just causes them a lot of distress okay when they feel like they have to do something in their work they feel like they're being like forced to take on a certain role and there's something that other people are making them do. They are very freedom loving. So being tied down is not something that they like to feel. And I see here within the candle that your soulmate is someone who often relies on divine intervention to know what to do next and where to go next. So they never get really stressed out about what action to take as next step forward in their life. To them, divine timing is real and they feel as though they will be shown the way when the time is right. So they never rush anything and they know that answers will come when the time is right. I see here with an infinite abundance that your person is very successful when it comes to their career. They've got infinite abundance, which means that when it comes to their financial security, they're in a really good place. They can probably provide for an entire family, and they're just overall in a place of clarity and a lot of certainty, or as much as you possibly can have when it comes to their career. Next up, we've got career change. So they're also currently in the process of thinking of changing their career because your soulmate feels as though they've kind of accomplished everything that they can in the field that they're currently in. They have become a leader, a authority figure, 
and now it's time to try something new. Now it's time to feed their creativity again. Your person is a little restless when it comes to their career and accomplishments within their career because they really don't like feeling stagnant and they don't like to just rest on their laurels. They like to continuously kind of grow and see how they can accomplish more things. But I wanna add just a few more details into your reading for you, group number three. So within Horus, I can see here that your person is an amazing manifester. They have this kind of magnetic and powerful pull with their thoughts. So when they think something, it usually happens. It usually comes true. They have a little bit of the psychic ability. And I also want you to know that what we've received from your reading so far shows someone who has like a broad statue, someone who stands tall and proud, broad shoulders, someone who is sure of themselves, someone who maybe even has a little bit of a slightly intimidating external appearance. We've got strength, so think of a muscular type of person or just overall someone who shows strength through great posture, leadership as well. I mean, we are not going to follow someone who seems weak. So again, posture is a big one. Not necessarily that they're just a huge person. That doesn't have to be the case. But within leadership, we can see that your soulmate is someone who has like a great posture when it comes to their back, when it comes to their shoulders, when it comes to the way they interact with people. Their whole mannerism is one that is very secure and very sure of themselves. And I definitely also see here within Serapis Bay as well as Faith, we've got this mixture of features that are on one hand very masculine and then on the other hand also pretty feminine. So someone who, if they're in their divine masculine, because of their energy, their posture, maybe also the fact that they are pretty muscular or toned, they have a lot of masculinity, but their features, like for example, their lips, their nose, are not overly sharp or not overly masculine. There's still a little bit of softness in there, but just the right amount. Like your person, group number three, is someone who looks very aesthetically pleasing. They have a lot of features that society praises. Like for example, big eyes, they've got a very straight nose, they've got high cheekbones, they've got lips that are full, not too full, not too thin, and a very beautiful bone structure. So your person is definitely a looker. Your person is definitely someone who's physically very attractive and who's kind of figuring out what field that they want to move into when it comes to their work at this point because they're not happy with where they were. It was most likely a male-dominated field. Now, that doesn't mean that they won't go into a male-dominated field again, group number three, but they're just kind of sick and tired of what they've been doing, and now they're looking for a new profession. So they're at a halfway point. They're at a point of figuring out what's next. So they'll need a little bit of time to know precisely what baskets that they want to put their eggs in next. Now, group number three, this is the first part of your prediction. We'll now move on to the second, even more intricate part, which is based on your zodiac sign. So what I'd like you to do is scroll down into the description box, click your sign, and you'll be fast forwarded to the second part of your soulmate reading. Hello, group number four. Welcome to your soulmate prediction. Now you chose the Divine Feather Messenger Oracle in connectivity to this beautiful sparkly green butterfly love potion. Ooh, there we go. Let's give it a little shake. This is the beautiful love potion that you chose. Now let's get into your reading to figure out precisely who your soulmate is, when you're going to meet them, everything about them. So make sure that you add both parts together. This is part one of your reading and then part two will be based on your zodiac sign, which you can access at the end of this reading. So let's get into it. First up, I believe we've got the canary. So here within the canary, I can see that your soulmate is someone who isn't afraid to speak their mind. They're someone who has found their voice. So in the past, they have been in situations and relationships that were a little abusive, where 
their voice wasn't really heard or cherished, but they got out of that situation and they've learned that that's not something that they want to tolerate or be in any longer. Next up, we've got the flicker. So within the flicker, I can see that your soulmate is someone who is able to adapt. They're someone who trusts that they're always able to adapt. So should you start a family with your soulmate or move to a new country or change careers, they are someone who is very flexible and they are not rigid when it comes to certain things like gender roles in relationships. They are someone who just wants to do whatever works best for the individual situation and the individual relationship. So if, for example, you are able to earn a lot more than your partner and your partner is male and you identify as female, traditionally the gender role would be that the man goes to work and the female maybe stays at home and takes care of the children if one had to decide who stays home and who goes to work. But for your person, they're very secure in themselves. So if those roles were reversed, just to take this as an example, they're fine with that and they will do the best job that they can while still wholeheartedly supporting you without feeling insecure. Next up, we've got the blackbird. Now within the blackbird, I can see here that your soulmate has so many unique qualities and so much untapped potential that they have yet to learn about themselves in their next relationship. Now that next relationship, relationship could be with you group number four but it could also be with someone else if you end up meeting your soulmate at a later point in time but we'll figure out more about that as we progress within your reading i just also want you to know here within the blackbird that your soulmate is someone who gets more beautiful as they age there's someone who looks better with time and they're aging like fine wine so to say so that's good for you if you stay with them long term and in the eyelight i can see that they have learned a lot about their financial mindset now your soulmate is someone who at one point had a very different financial mindset maybe they spent a lot of money on unnecessary things or on things that look shiny on the outside but didn't really fill the void or didn't really do anything for them on an emotional level so that's where i definitely see here within the iolite that they've changed quite a bit the rodenite shows me here that they're also completely fine with the journey that they've taken when it comes to their financial mindset they understand that everybody goes through some changes a lot of us have phases where we use money in order to buy things to impress people who don't really care about us and i think especially as teenagers or in the earlier stages of life this can be an issue or this can be just something that causes friction emotionally speaking but i definitely see here that your person has learned to deal with it and has grown out of that phase a long time ago next up we've got the bag as well as the horseshoe so your soulmate is someone who has gotten a new job or raised just recently just overall their bag is definitely very full their bank account is doing well it's looking healthy and the horseshoe shows me that there's someone who is followed by good fortune and good luck the horseshoe is a symbol that throughout the history of time has had different meanings but as of recently or as of now the, the horseshoe with the opening facing upwards is symbolic of good luck if the horseshoe were facing the other way then that could be bad luck that could be detriment because when it's facing in a way that the opening can catch things that's where the abundance is said to flow into that's where the good luck is kind of caught and held so if it were um, the other side around group number four then obviously your money would fall out your abundance would drip out and kind of just you know scatter everywhere so the horseshoe definitely shows us that your soulmate is someone who is currently experiencing a lot of good fortune and who's just overall someone who's very lucky in life maybe because they'll end up with you group number four who knows so Next up, I'm going to be using the Below the Surface Oracle deck for the first time. I've been working on this Oracle deck for so long. It is honestly my best work to date, and you guys know my decks are no joke. The quality is insane. Just look at these details. I have the link below in the description box where during the intro, I take you through a whole tour of this deck that I've developed. So if you're interested in it, 
make sure you check it out because the pre-orders list is filling up quickly and when this deck is officially launched of course all of the pre-orders will receive their decks but everyone else um, i'm not sure if there will be any decks left at this point so make sure you get on the pre-orders list if you really want to add this deck to your collection next up we've got the orange dotted tusk fish so i can see that your soulmate is someone who thinks outside of the box they're not afraid to DIY things if they have to so no matter how well they're doing financially speaking they always have this side to them that is a little bit like DIY that's a little bit let's just figure things out and doesn't like to be wasteful next up we've got protect your assets that's exactly what they do that's what we've got as a message in the parrot fish your soulmate is someone who isn't careless with what they've worked hard for and they will protect their assets at all costs they will not allow for anyone to mess with them to fool them to screw them over financially speaking especially and if they have a family that is a pet peeve of theirs that is the most important thing they want to keep their loved ones safe and they want their children and grandchildren to never feel as though they've missed out or like they couldn't have the life that they wanted. Next up, we've got the Moorish Idol. So within the Moorish Idol, I want you to know that your soulmate, once they're devoted, that's it, okay? They are completely loyal to you. They will never stray. They will never go and be with someone else once they have locked you down, okay? Once they have kind of figured out that they want to be with you and they have popped the question or you're married to them that's it they're all about figuring it out they're all about ensuring that they put their best foot forward in a relationship and they don't stray they don't cheat they don't look at other people they don't fantasize secretly about being in a relationship with someone else they're devoted to their partner and rather than feeling as though it was a mistake to get married when things get tough they actually figure it out. They have a very old school mindset when it comes to this. Next up, we've got the Six of Wands. Now, the Six of Wands shows me that your soulmate is someone who likes to win and they like to pick teammates when it comes to friendships, but also romantic relationships. They want to feel as though you are a valuable teammate, like they can count on you, like you're contributing to the relationship in many different ways, and like you are reliable. That's one thing that I see here within the Six of Wands when it comes to your person. And within Strength, it also becomes clear that your soulmate is someone who has been through a lot. They will never physically intimidate you. They will never use their strength or their economic standpoint to control another person. Person, but what they will do is remain calm and composed and compassionate and show true inner strength by not doing what they could do in order to win in a situation, by not using unfair advantages in order to dominate or in order to put other people in their places. I see here within the Queen of Swords that there's someone who is very intelligent, there's someone who is well-educated, so they most likely work within a field that is mentally extremely challenging where they also have to think outside the box. So product development, marketing, just innovation, okay? I also, one thing that I'm getting from your reading is tech and everything that has to do with thinking a little bit outside of what is conservative and what has been normal up until this point and also creating new things. That's one thing I see here within the Queen of Swords. And the Eight of Pentacles shows me that they're currently still learning, maybe they're even taking certain classes or they're debating joining courses in order to hone their skills, make their skills even more invaluable. Because one thing that your soulmate understands is that the more unique their skill set is, the more irreplaceable that they become and the more they can really earn in their career, right? Because when you're irreplaceable, no one can fire you or no one can take that spot away from you. You've carved out a space that is uniquely yours that cannot be replicated. And that's one thing that I see here when it comes to your soulmate that they're trying to do and trying to learn. Next up, we've got hidden in plain sight. Your soulmate is 
closer than you think that they are. They're hidden within plain sight. They are not far from you geographically speaking or even professionally speaking. And in hidden in plain sight, I definitely also want you to know here that your soulmate is someone who's very flexible. When they go to work, they look put together. When they're chilling at home, they may sometimes look a little scruffy. When they're meeting the parents, they look like the perfect daughter or son-in-law or person-in-law, whoever they identify as. And I see here within no strings attached that your soulmate is someone who up until this point has preferred relationships where there isn't too much attachment or commitment. Your soulmate is definitely someone who has avoided getting too involved with another person because they know that when the right person comes along, they will have their unchangeable devotion. They will have their complete loyalty. But up until that point, there's no reason for them to get hung up on an individual that they know isn't going to be with them for the rest of their life. And that sounds really harsh, group number four, but it's true. Like your soulmate is someone who just wants to be with that forever person before they actually put in a lot of effort or they invest a lot into that relationship monetarily when it comes to their time or their emotions. That's just who they are. I see here within multiple streams that right now your soulmate has multiple streams of income. They have big aspirations financially speaking and they also understand that a lot of the most successful people or a lot of people who earn a lot of money, they've got multiple streams of revenue, not just one. And that's what they're kind of modeling their own businesses after. So your person has this entrepreneurial spirit. There's no one thing we can point at when it comes to your person's profession. They're just doing whatever they can in order to make the bag and things work out for them. Because in the horseshoe, I see that everything that they touch kind of turns to gold, if you will. And of course, everything that they're doing is legal, group number four, in case this is something you were worried about. I see here within healthy boundaries that your soulmate is someone who appreciates having their own space and time to do the things that they like to do. They have drawn lines between family and friends who have been kind of nosy or who have overstepped boundaries in the past and your soulmate also knows that they have to set boundaries when it comes to their career and when it comes to their finances as well they don't mix business with pleasure they're protective over the money they've worked hard for and they want to continue to make more furthermore i definitely also see here that when it comes to your soulmate they're someone who has a kind of underdog look to them so they're not someone who stands out out in a crazy type of manner okay they are the type of person who walks into a room and can kind of blend in with other people so a lot of people don't see this coming when your soulmate all of a sudden just shows off the fact that they're very intelligent that they've got a skill level that's above average they are often underestimated but Better to be underestimated, I'd say, than people to have huge expectations and then be disappointed by what you deliver. And I want you to know, group number four, that the same goes for the relationship with this person. You may not expect much at first, but then as you get to know them and over time, you start to realize, wow, this person is the real deal. And they've actually got a lot to offer in many different ways. Now, group four, this is part one of your reading that I've received for you. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Make sure that you leave a little engagement ring emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you received this reading, you claim it, you made it to the end, and we're now going to move on to part two of your prediction. It's very simple. Just scroll down into the description box or to the top of the comment section click your zodiac sign and you'll be fast forwarded to the second even more detailed part of your soulmate reading where we'll get into their zodiac sign when you'll meet them and lots of other fun little details so i'll catch you over there hello all my gorgeous aries babies and welcome to the second even more personalized part of your soulmate prediction so let's get straight into it shall we i hope that you enjoyed the first part of your reading which you got to choose from during the intro you got to choose from one of these four lovely potions that i have here but now let's talk all things aries shall we so first up we've got the lady and goddess i can see here that your soulmate is someone who 
who allows for the embracing of feminine energy. This is the energy of reception. This is the energy of being able to daydream, to be in softness and to allow yourself to be vulnerable. So your soulmate is someone who doesn't keep you in fight or flight mode, but they actually want that secure attachment style that simply allows you to be in your divine feminine energy rather than constantly worrying about where things are going or what's happening next or what they're doing at any given point. And also in the feminine, I can see that your soulmate is someone who's very giving. And that's where the feminine energy comes in because feminine energy is receptive. Feminine energy is the energy of receiving gracefully and not feeling bad about it. Next up, we've got the fire. So your soulmate is someone who is super passionate. This is someone who loves when you embrace more feminine energy. And it doesn't matter whether you identify as male or female or anything in between. I want you to know here that feminine energy is something that we all possess, but it comes out in different ways. And we've got different quantities of feminine energy within ourselves. We each have our own unique ratios of feminine and masculine energy. And I definitely also want you to know here that your soulmate is someone who loves the way you move, the way you carry yourself, and your face when they are able to give you something and you're able to just receive. They love to see you smile and to make you happy. I can see here within in bulk that when it comes to your soulmate, they are someone who came to the realization that they want to be more of a protector. They want to be someone who is there for you no matter what situation you're in. And that's something that makes them feel comfortable. That's something that makes them feel as though they're doing something that is valuable and they're kind of providing for the relationship emotionally, maybe financially, as well as spiritually. So I see here within May that this is the month that is the most probable for you to meet your soulmate. I'll just put that right here in the middle of your spread. But I think we can add a few more details. I feel like when it comes to numerology, there's a lot more we can look into. So spirit tells us that the number seven is of some sort of importance. So we've got the 7th of May for you right here. I hope that you can see the number seven. So all of my beautiful Aries babies, I definitely want you to know here that May 7th is an important day and it's most likely a good time for you to meet the soulmate if you haven't met them already. I also want to add a few more actually astrological correspondences. Why not? I feel called to, I feel like spirit is telling us it's time to figure out more of your soulmate's placements. Let's see what spirit has to say. So let's zoom in for you right here, my beautiful Aries babies. So within the symbol, we've actually got Neptune. And I want you to know here within Neptune, this is the planet of psychic sensitivity. This is the planet that rules Pisces, by the way. And Neptune is also the type of planet that connects to spirituality, okay? Your person is a very artsy type of person. They are the type of person who you can rely on to bring out some fun in situations. And I definitely see here that your soulmate is someone who inspires you to create more art as well. So let's see what else that we receive here. Let's see what type of sign we've got. Ooh, okay, this is a very interesting one. So we've actually got Capricorn here as an important astrological sign for your person, my beautiful Aries babies, which is a sign that is actually an earth sign, which goes great with your fire sign energy as it would be very calming and soothing for you to be with an earth sign. And I want you to know that Capricorn is a very efficient, disciplined, and economical sign, which means that they don't overspend. They'll be really good at managing finances and they're a very reliable person let's figure out some letters within your soulmate's name shall we when it comes to their initials okay so we've got g e and i Okay, I'll put that right here for you so that can give you some added information about your soulmate situation, my beautiful Aries. Let's move further into your reading. 
Next up, we've got the Eight of Swords. So I see that your soulmate is someone who tends to overthink. Your soulmate is definitely someone who tries to do everything to their best abilities and they have some tendencies to suffer from insomnia because of just how much they overthink and how much energy that goes into their brain just being on overdrive in many instances but while this can be a little difficult to deal with at night there are some good parts to this. A partner who overthinks and who notices lots of little details is most likely going to be emotionally available and also notice when you need something. But that's also why you're soulmates, right? Because you're connected in a very intimate, intricate way. Next up in the Queen of Wands, I can see strong fire sign energy. So this could be a representation of you, my beautiful Aries, with a lot of feminine energy because we've got the Queen of Wands, right? Which is heavier on the feminine energy than for example the king of wands so this plays out beautifully with the lady and goddess that we had within your reading and the fact that your soulmate really loves it when you play into and towards your feminine aspects and your feminine role in the relationship the queen of wands is not weak it's not a pushover at all the queen of wands is actually super attractive energetic as well as sure of herself so they love a confident strong you next up we've got the five of wands so when it comes to your soulmate i do also see here that there is a little bit of backlash when they feel rejected. The Five of Wands definitely shows me here that they're a passionate person who definitely loves physical touch. So when that's something that's maybe rejected or not happening, they may kind of not throw a tantrum, but it's definitely something that they struggle with because they're just so into you. But I see here within the Ace of Cups that that's actually something they get over very quickly. It's not something that lasts or lingers. They never really stay mad at you, but they are sometimes upset when they can't spend as much much time with you as they would like. The Ace of Cups is also an indication of the fact that your soulmate is someone who you've never met before. Now they may not geographically be super far away from you or anything like that, however you've never encountered them face to face before this will be a completely new relationship that is built from scratch and if you're just taking a huge inhale and thinking to yourself thank god i really don't have anyone in my friend circle that i want to date or be with lucky you my beautiful aries babies because you will not need to as this is someone that is bringing some fresh energy into your life which you haven't experienced just yet so they're going to be very different from anyone you've ever experienced or encountered both romantically as well as sensually now in i am forgiving i can see that your soulmate is someone who forgives mistakes and imperfections very quickly and easily we spoke about how they can't stay mad at you but that's also probably why they're your soulmate if you're dating someone who can stay mad at you very easily that's a red flag for you my beautiful aries babies you need someone who is forgiving as you are more of a impulsive temperamental sign of the zodiac you need a little bit of wiggle room you need some room for freedom and to make decisions and also make mistakes and i honor virtue i see that this is one thing that your soulmate is about they've also got a strong moral compass and it's important for them to always do what they think is right now if they make a mistake and unbeknownst to them they did something wrong that's fine, they can forgive themselves too. However, do know here that your soulmate is someone who wants to be in a relationship with another individual who has a strong sense of integrity and again, a strong moral compass. Next up, we've got the Bottle Nose Dolphin from my new unreleased deck that I showed you guys during the intro. Ah, I love the below the surface deck so much. Um, your person, your soulmate, is really great at socializing and celebrating life. They love to just live in the moment. They're always invited to all gatherings, to all parties. They are everybody's favorite party guest because they can talk to anyone. They can have a conversation with any other guests or any other person who may have been invited. 
your soulmate is definitely also someone who knows when to arrive and when to leave. So they're never earlier than a host specifies. They're always fashionably late. And by fashionably late, I mean like five or 10 minutes. And they also leave at a good time. They never overstay their welcome. And they just have a very fun, lighthearted demeanor to them, which makes them so attractive to other people. And they have a healthy social life, not one that is rampant with parties every two minutes, but they get to pick and choose when they want to go out, what they'd like to attend. And people just like to have your soulmate around them when there are any types of gatherings, because it also reflects positively on whoever invited your soulmate. I see here within the leafy sea dragon that your soulmate is someone who believes that everything serves a purpose and they are so thankful for flaws and imperfections even because they understand that every single cell in their body and in your body is fighting every second to just keep you going and keep you alive and your soulmate feels as though even imperfections you may have, which is maybe some skin imperfection, cellulite, maybe you're not happy with your physical shape, maybe you're not happy with your hair, with one of your features, with your skin texture, as already mentioned, with the way that you move or the way that right now your confidence level still stands and is. I want you to know here that your person, your soulmate, is someone who feels as though all of these things serve a purpose. You can grow from your insecurities and you can learn to love them. You can work on them, for example, if you're unhappy with your weight and you feel as though you are too light or too heavy. You can work on that, right? Exercise and eating what you should be eating to make that situation more comfortable, especially if you feel like you would be healthier another way. It serves a purpose for your body to be able to take on different shapes and show you different types of imperfections because sometimes it's just a little nudge to you to take better care of yourself. And your soulmate is someone who never judges you. They find you beautiful as you are. And they're the type of person that you can go through life with without worrying that they will start to think less of you once wrinkles start to show up or you've lost your youth and there's saggy skin or just things like that, they are not superficial at all. And to them, a body is just a body. It's just a vessel. It's a vehicle that we use in order to experience life. And they are truly attracted to your soul and your energy on a deeper level. So my gorgeous Aries babies, this is the reading that I received in regards to your soulmate. Please do leave a little dolphin emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you were here and you received your reading and that you found it insightful, that you claim it, you manifest it. I'd like to thank you so much for spending this divine time and space with me. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well if you're new here because we clearly vibe with one another if you're still listening and just know that I'm sending you so much love so many hugs and I can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming readings hello my beautiful Taurus babies and welcome to the second even more personalized part of your soulmate prediction so I hope that you enjoyed part one where you got to pick from one of these four gorgeous love potions but now we'll talk all things Taurus to figure out exactly who your soulmate is what their zodiac sign is when you'll meet them all of these little details so let's see what we've got for you and what spirit has to say to our beautiful Taurus babies first up we've got the lady and goddess we've got divine feminine energy that your soulmate deeply appreciates so no matter who you identify as I want you to know here in the goddess that your soulmate appreciates you receiving your soulmate appreciates you being in your divine feminine and also just allowing yourself to live a soft life, not being stressed out, not being in a situation where you're constantly kept in fight or flight. They want you to feel comfortable. They want to spoil you. They want to hug you. They want to make you feel warm and fuzzy inside. They want to do all of these things for you that allow you to just explore more of this divine goddess feminine type of energy. So next up, we've got the book of shadows as well as the staff. 
let's get into it. The Book of Shadows actually showed up in reverse. So I want you to know here that the Book of Shadows reverse means that your soulmate doesn't keep any secrets and they absolutely cannot stand dishonesty. That is one thing that your soulmate is completely allergic to. And I also want you to know here that they're the type of person who will tell you what's on their mind and will share their feelings with you. The staff shows me here that your soulmate is someone who craves stability and wants to create stability within their relationships as any type of instability makes them kind of nervous and they just can't think straight overall when they're in a situation where they feel as though they don't know what's happening next, they don't know what the commitment level is. Your soulmate is someone who likes to build a solid foundation and create a life together. Now let's see during what month of the year you're most likely going to meet them. So we've got March for you, my beautiful Taurus babies. I also want to add a little bit more numerology into your reading. I hope that that's fine with you. Let's get into what spirit has when it comes to the day of the month of March. So spirit, what day are we looking at for Taurus when it comes to meeting their soulmate? What is their lucky day in love? Ooh, okay, we've got the 13th for you, my beautiful Taurus babies. You may have either seen this number as a lucky or unlucky number in the past. Maybe you have no feelings towards the number 13, but it's definitely one that has carried a lot of different meanings within different cultures. So this is a spiritually charged number. Let's see what zodiac sign that Taurus will be dealing with. Okay, so we've got Leo. Let me just zoom in for you, my gorgeous Taurus baby, so you can see for yourself. So this is actually the symbol of Leo. Leo is a fire sign that's very passionate, enthusiastic, temperamental, and fun. It is the symbol of the lion, in case you didn't already guess that. And I also just want to add a placement for you so we can just figure out more about your person. Ooh, okay. So let's zoom in on what we've got here, which is Pluto actually, also known as the Plutoid. I don't know if we want to call this a planet or not, but I see that finances are very important. And with this kind of Leo energy and Pluto and just a lot of Leo energy in your person to begin with, I see that they're very protective over finances. They're someone who isn't afraid to try something new or take a risk, financially speaking. And they also really like to invest in different things. They are someone who is very much into finances period and the whole science behind making money to them it's a game and they're good at it and they want to continue winning that's one thing that i can see here when it comes to your soulmate but i want to figure out what else that the universe has to say and has to offer for my beautiful taurus babies we've got the sun as well so i want you to know here that while we did talk about pluto when it comes to their Leo placement, we do have that here within their sun sign. The sun is, of course, the source of all life on this planet, or most of it. And in case you didn't know, this is really like your guides are here with you, telling you precisely who your soulmate is, because out of all of these 56 astrological cards, receiving Leo and the sun, I mean, the chances are very tiny that these would match each other, right? Because first of all, this die could have fallen on any one of its 12 sides with the 12 different signs. And then we've got 56 different cards that could have corresponded to Leo. But actually what happened is you received the sun and Leo. And in case you didn't know, Leo is ruled by the sun. And I definitely see this strong Leo energy here, which is generous, which is very creative, leadership type of energy. And this was meant to be for you, my beautiful Tauruses. Leo is an amazing match here when it comes to your soulmate prediction. And Leo is meant to be with you at this point in time. Next up, we've also got the moon. So clearly your angels and guides are right here with you because again, what are the odds? that you receive the sun 
and the moon card. The sun card corresponds to number 18. The moon corresponds to number 19. We've got 56 different cards within this deck, right? And you receive the moon in order to receive their moon placement. So I'm going to go in with the dice, the die one more time so we can figure out what your soulmate's moon sign placement is. Ooh, okay, so we've got again a confirmation that we are speaking of the moon sign. This could have gone on to any other correspondence, any other planetary correspondence, but we received the moon. So we are really talking about their moon sign here. This is really important and this is going to be extremely accurate, my beautiful Taurus babies, because clearly there is some sort of higher power here with us during this reading. It's undeniable. You may want to call it coincidences, but let's just be real. These cards are talking. There is some sort of mystical energy around us that's giving us all the answers we need. So let's see what we've got in their moon. Ooh, okay. Spirit says we've got Taurus energy here in their moon, my beautiful Taurus babies. So you really get one another when it comes to that. That's probably also where this stability aspect comes from when it comes to your soulmate's wants and needs and the things that they really desire in relationships. So I do want you to know here that their Leo sun and Taurus moon is a great combination between passionate and fun and generous and warm-hearted but also stable and reliable and in a sense just being someone who you can count on no matter the situation let's move further into your reading this is just such a fantastic reading so far next up we've got the key for you now the key shows me that this person is someone who always has a solution to any problem any door that has yet to be opened your soulmate will find a key, even if they need to go to the ends of the earth. And the same goes when it comes to winning you over and kind of opening up your heart to them. They will find a way, they will find the key to your heart, so to say, my beautiful Taurus babies. And here within March and the feminine energy, I see that they love to see you grow. They love to see you blossom. They love to see you slowly open up and and kind of gain trust in them and the relationship so your soulmate is a very gentle caring type of individual and they're someone who overall knows that it may take time to win your trust and that it's worth it to not give up to continue trying i also see here that your soulmate is someone who loves to engage in physical activity using their hands now you can interpret this in a very spicy way about what they like to do behind closed doors and what they're good at behind closed doors but you know it's up to you my beautiful Taurus baby but do know here within use your hands they may be into something like pottery or just building things from scratch but either way they like to stay connected to their body they like to engage in arts and crafts I also see here that family is very important to your soulmate your soulmate is someone who has a great relationship with their family and and they would want you to have that same bond, okay? And if you don't have a great relationship with your family, then this may be just the perfect situation for you because it's like you're gaining some extended family through your soulmate by being with them, right? It's like all of a sudden your soulmate's parents have an extra kid, which is you, or at least that's how one would see it in the type of culture that I'm from. So just knowing that your soulmate's family is very welcoming and and open and warm is something that can really calm your nerves there will be no family drama should you end up wanting to be with this person romantically speaking it's of course your choice you can also end up with a twin flame or just a different person who maybe isn't a soulmate but you want to be with romantically speaking the choice is yours but this is about your soulmate this is a bond that is healthy that feels very organic but is maybe not as polarizing as spicy as a twin flame relationship now let's see what letters they've got within their name my beautiful tauruses so we've got the letter m as well as n 
So these are important parts of their initials. And I want to move further into your reading because we can get more details out of this. I want to carry on with my new unreleased below the surface Oracle deck that I also showed you during the intro of this video. I am so proud of this deck. And I just like love that I finally get to use it and show it off to you guys, especially because you guys helped me create the backs of these cards by voting in this Instagram poll. Thank you guys so much for being a part of every single step of my journey and my creative ventures. So we've got the blue whale. I see that your soulmate is the type of person that will bring you ultimate fulfillment. Yes, sometimes you may be in the mood for a little bit more drama because your soulmate is just so stable, so in love with you. There's literally never any drama that you may end up creating drama where there just isn't any without noticing, right? Like for example, every time you ask them, hey, do you love me? And they're like, yeah, I love you so much. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. And someday you just want to poke them a little more or you just want to get under their skin. But ultimately, you know, like this is the right situation for you. And another message that we've got within the blue whale is to dream big that it will all work out okay if you're currently wondering how you will come by such an amazing person someone who is really meant to be by your side who has all of these awesome traits that just seem too good to be true i definitely just want you to know here within the blue whale that it will work out favorably for you don't overthink it okay know here within the tiger shark that your ancestors are watching you didn't come this far down your lineage to just mess things up or not be happy trust me your ancestors have fought so hard for you to be able to have this freedom to date people internationally, interracially, from any type of spiritual background so you can find that perfect person. So you have a large pool of people to choose from. And your soulmate is someone who is also very spiritual, who likes to honor their ancestors and those who came before them. They've got a lot of respect for their elders and just overall people who are more advanced in age and in life experiences than they are. So I definitely want you to know here that it would always be a joint mission of both you and your soulmate to make the best of the opportunities that you have been given. And even if your relationship with your family may be strained or there are just certain family members that you don't really vibe with, this connection to the soulmate and just seeing how they interact even with difficult family members or family members who aren't on the same page as them will inspire you to be able to better deal with challenges in your own family next up we've got the star so your soulmate is someone who always sees hope on the horizon they're the type of person who always feels as though things can be done better Things will get better. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. They constantly see the glass as half full instead of half empty. They are someone who isn't afraid to dream big. Your soulmate is someone who will believe in your goals and your aspirations and will push you to go for them. Your soulmate is someone who would never hold you back from anything that you wanted to try. And I want you to know here within the star that they also have this kind of beacon of light that surrounds them whenever they enter a room people's heads turn your soulmate is someone who has a very special type of energy that commands both attention but at the same time is kind of calm and stable and understated so the leo sun is what commands attention that's the grandiosity that is the part that's in a sense kind of dramatic showy but then we have this Taurus energy, which is very stable, which is very steadfast, which is in a way also kind of understated, which gives them a very special one of a kind aura that you don't encounter every single day, but is undeniably there. Then we've also got the King of Pentacles, which is the King of Earth signs. We're referring back to their Taurus placement here. The King of Pentacles shows that 
Right now, their career is very important to them. Your soulmate is someone who is going through a lot when it comes to their career, but these are all things that they wanted. They wanted this extra responsibility of being the manager, the boss, the CEO. They wanted the extra responsibility of putting themselves out there and into a leadership position. And this is where they're destined to be at this point in time. And the King of Pentacles shows that they want to make their ancestors proud when it comes to their earthly accomplishments as well. Maybe they were the first one in their family to even go to college to graduate from an amazing university and now make the type of money that they're making or start a successful business. That is another thing that your person, your soulmate wants to take advantage of. One thing that we definitely also need to notice within the King of Pentacles is that they may come from a background that has a very native type of ancestry to it. They may just overall be a person of color, a person who does not identify as white and therefore it may be even more important for them to make their ancestors proud because their lineage may have been through more adversity in recent times in the past couple hundred years than maybe other people's ancestors. So it's almost like they've got something to prove and they've got that extra spark and that extra fire within them to succeed because it's all for a greater cause and it's all for their lineage. Now, all of my beautiful Taurus babies, this is a reading that I received for you and I really hope you enjoyed it and found it insightful. Make sure you leave a sun emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you are representing the Taurus fam and that you made it to the end of your reading. If you're completely new here on my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I mean, we clearly vibe with one another if you are still here. And of course, don't forget to check out my below the surface oracle deck. It is linked in the description box. Now, my stunning Taurus family, I wish you an amazing rest of your day or night whenever you've tuned in. I'm sending you so much love and so many hugs, and I can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming readings. Hello all my beautiful Gemini babies and welcome to the second even more intricate part of your soulmate prediction where we're going to figure out everything there is to know about your soulmate from their zodiac sign to precisely when you will meet them. So during the intro of this video you got to pick from these four different love potions so I hope that you enjoyed part one of your reading but now we are going to talk all things Gemini when it comes to your soulmate. So let's get right into to it shall we so first up we've got yule for you one thing that i can see here about your soulmate is the fact that they're the type of person who isn't afraid to reinvent themselves they are someone who is very courageous very charismatic and unafraid your soulmate who could have lived the equivalent of like five other lives at this point is definitely someone who is very intriguing and they're a very artsy type of person that's one thing that i see here within Yule. Next up, oh, we've got the shaman and we've also got death. So the shaman's showing up reverse for us and I want you to know here that death in this oracle means also a rebirth, just like the Yule. So your person isn't afraid to reinvent themselves. They're not afraid to reinvent the wheel. If they're not happy with something, your soulmate is simply going to change it rather than feeling as though something is innately wrong with them. The same goes for your your romantic relationship with your soulmate if they're not happy with something in the relationship they're simply going to try to change that aspect rather than feel as though the entire relationship is doomed i see here within the hearth that they have learned from a young age that life is really what you make of it it's not so much about where you started or what you got handed to you it's all about what you can create from what you were blessed with whether that's a lot or not very much your soulmate is someone who definitely knows how to make the most out of any situation let's see in what month you're most likely going to meet them okay we've got february for you my beautiful gemini's this is the month in which you're most likely going to meet your soulmate i also want you to know that your lucky day as a gemini by default is actually wednesday and your lucky numbers are five and nine but i want to get a little precise here with february and when you will meet your soulmate
soulmate. So I'm going to add some numerology into the mix and ask spirit precisely when my beautiful Gemini babies are going to meet their soulmate. So spirit, please help Gemini find out when they're going to meet their soulmate in February. Okay, we've got the 11th. 11 is actually not just a pleasing number, an aesthetically pleasing number, but it is also a master number. It is the number of initiation, so I wouldn't be surprised if your soulmate just randomly walks up to you and speaks to you. This is a number of leadership, of fearlessness, of not being afraid, of being the odd one that's like just standing out from the crowd. And I want to look into some placements of your soulmate's birth chart as well. Okay, so let me just zoom in here for you so we can decipher what's going on. So here we actually have Neptune. Neptune is the planet of spirituality, of imagination, and psychic sensitivity as well. So their Neptune placement is rather important, but I also want to get into an astrological correspondence in form of a zodiac sign. So here we've got Capricorn for you. So Capricorn energy is strong, diligent. This this is earth sign energy that is grounded and reliable so that is one thing that i can see coming from your person from your soulmate all my beautiful gemini's but let's move further into your reading we still have so much to uncover about your person so we've got i invoke laughter they are a jokester they are someone who always makes you smile and laugh they're the type of person with whom you're always going to have a great time and people like being around your soulmate because they are someone who gets along with everybody because their humor is really amazing and i am open to love in various forms i see that your soulmate is overall a very loving person they love animals they love other people they love all their family members they're just all about love your soulmate is someone whose feelings don't easily get hurt your soulmate is someone who is just here to celebrate the existence of all living beings and planet earth and okay we've got Gaia I mean really your guides and your angels are right here within your reading it's undeniable we were just talking about this connection to earth and all living beings and your soulmate just being here to celebrate that and then we received Gaia so Gaia is all about being mindful of the planet coming back to earth and staying grounded so your soulmate is someone who has this spiritual aspect of loving to just spend time outside in the nature they love to be connected to the nature as much as they possibly can and i see here that they're also very mindful when it comes to what they consume they try to recycle they try to make sure that they only use what they need I'm just rearranging our little props our little potions that we got here to make some more space for you my beautiful gemini's so your person is definitely not woke but they are self-aware when it comes to their consumerism next up we've got isis so i can see here that your soulmate is someone who is very focused and they want to make their goals and their dreams a reality and they believe that it's possible and truly that is the only way to really make your goals and aspirations your life you have to believe that it's possible for you. You have to believe that you can do it because if you don't, then obviously it's not going to happen because no one's going to grind as hard for you as you. No one's going to make sure that you will reach a goal as much as you would because it doesn't matter to anyone as much as it matters to you. So I definitely see that your soulmate is someone who very strongly believes in manifestation and in speaking things into existence. The younger woman shows me that your soulmate was in dealings or a relationship with someone younger than them. And I want you to know here within the younger woman that your soulmate is definitely attracted to bubble fun feminine and young type of energy and they just overall like that divine feminine pull and draw that comes with it they like to have polarity I definitely see here that your person your soulmate is someone who is very unafraid they're very unafraid to recreate and reinvent themselves but they also love to have some stability and nurturing when it 
comes to their relationships. Next up within the Orca pod, which is actually from my beautiful below the surface Oracle deck, which is debuting for the first time in this video. I introduced you to it during the intro of this video. I love this deck so much. So the Orca pod stands for teamwork that makes the dream work and working with others to accomplish greatness. That is one thing that I can see that your soulmate is constantly trying to do. They are a little extroverted, really. They're the type of person who gets along with anyone. They feel comfortable in a group of people and they like to work with other people in order to accomplish things in their career, in order to accomplish things professionally. And I see with the flower hat jelly that they have a routine, okay? They have this kind of like almost checklist, if you will, that they go through in order to ensure that everything gets done that needs to get done. So your soulmate is someone who is organized because they know that in order to make anything happen, they need to be on point. They need to make sure that certain things get ticked off the list. And that's what I see here within the flower hat jelly. Furthermore, within the epidote, it's very clear that your soulmate is someone who gets along with everyone and they can have great small talk and surface level conversation. But the epidote also shows me here that your soulmate likes to go deeper when it comes to figuring out what works best for them and their routine. So they will most likely also have very deep conversations with you about health and spiritual well-being. So they have a funny side to them, but they also have a very serious side to themselves that comes out every now and then when they speak about their goals and their aspirations. Next up within the Labradorite, know that your soulmate is someone who believes in magic. They believe in divine intervention and inexplicable serendipity. So inexplicably experiencing some really amazing so-called coincidences, which were actually so meant to be and so channeled from the universe and meant just for you. That's one thing that I definitely see here when it comes to your soulmate. Next up, we've got judgment. Your soulmate is someone who stands up for the underdog. Your soulmate is someone who can sometimes be very hard on themselves. I want you to know here that they're learning to move on from mistakes that they've made, but they're definitely struggling a little bit with that, okay? And judgment shows me here that they are working on being someone who isn't so hard on themselves and gives themselves the same energy as they would give others. The Ace of Pentacles shows me here that your soulmate is also someone who's in a phase in their life where they're working hard towards some financial and material goals and the ace of pentacles shows me here that they're actually just starting off a new business they're starting off a new venture in the earthly realms in hopes of this taking off and being the next big thing let's add some letters to their name and their initials so we can figure out more details about your soulmate shall we oh okay we have some letters that intuitively popped out Let's see what your angels have to say. Okay, so we've got G-I-A, Gia. So these are letters within your soulmate's name that you're going to want to look out for. These are their initials. So all of my gorgeous Gemini babies, this is the second part of your soulmate reading. I hope that you've enjoyed it and that you found it insightful. Please do leave a little star emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you made it all the way to the end and that you enjoyed it and that you represent the Gemini fam. I thank you for being here and for spending this divine time in space with me and I can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming readings. Hello all of my beautiful fellow Cancerians and welcome to the second even more intricate and personal part of your soulmate prediction. I hope that you enjoyed the first part where you got to pick from one of these four divine love potions that I created for you. And now we're getting into more personal details about your soulmate, such as their zodiac sign, when you'll meet them, all of the in-betweens. So we've got facing fear as well as Gaia. So within Kalima, I 
definitely see here that your soulmate is someone who is very supportive. They are a very spiritual person and they care about the planet and all living beings. So they are a family man, a family woman, okay? Your soulmate is someone who sees everyone as equal. They see the world as a place that is whole and not broken. They understand that the world has some challenging people and situations going on, but nevertheless, they are not going to lose faith in that connection to humanity and all living beings. I also want you to know here that they find that difficult times are actually a chance for reconciliation and for people to soar and find a new way to connect and communicate. Within Melchizedek, I can see here that your soulmate is someone who is highly educated. Now, they also love to continue self-educating. So they love reading books, blogs, watching documentaries, your person is always constantly growing spiritually, intellectually. They like to just overall continuously level up. Being stagnant is like their worst fear. They are also the type of person who is devoted to inner studies, so they most likely journal on a daily basis or meditate, and I definitely want you to know here within Melchizedek that they are a very mature person, they are wise beyond their years, and people as a child always thought that your soulmate was a lot older than they really were just because of their emotional maturity levels, which is great for a Cancerian because you need stability. In El Moria, I can see here that your soulmate is someone who wears this kind of cloak of protection and love because they are so loving and they don't take things personally, nothing really hurts them. There is this stoicism quote that goes something along the lines of, you're only hurt if you believe that you're hurt, that is your soulmate in a quote, in a sentence, okay? They never believe that anything bad that may have happened to them was intentional. They never see themselves as the victim, they never see themselves as being put in a situation on purpose or just having like bad faith or bad luck. They always see things as an opportunity to learn and to grow and as a situation in which love can prevail. So let's see when you're going to meet your soulmate. We've got September for you, my gorgeous Cancerian. So that is the month in which you're most likely to meet them. And we've also got April. So these are the two most fruitful months for meeting your soulmate. And I also want to just kind of break things down to the day, really, because why not? Let's ask Spirit what day in September they are most likely to meet their soulmate. So Spirit, please let us know all about Cancer and their soulmate and the perfect date in September. Oh, okay, we've got the number 17. Let me zoom in on it for you. There we go. So the 17th of September, we're now going to go ahead and do the same for the month of April. So Spirit, please let us know when Cancer is meeting their soulmate during the month of April. Okay, we've got seven. So seven seems to be a lucky number when it comes to your soulmate and meeting them and days for dates as well. So if you're thinking of planning dates, if you've already met your soulmate by the time you are watching your reading and your prediction, plan things on the seventh, important things. Also, your lucky numbers as a Cancerian are three and seven. So this makes a lot of sense, my beautiful Cancerians. And I also want you to know that when it comes to your lucky day, Monday is an amazing day for Cancerians. But let's move a little further into your soulmate prediction, shall we? So we can figure out more about this connection and your person. They also seem to have long hair. Okay, that's something that I can see here throughout the reading, long hair, and a very kind of calm demeanor. Next up, we've got the 10th house. Now, the 10th house is the house that actually rules Capricorn. And what this means is that public image and their career is very important to them. That is one thing that I can see here about your soulmate. So I also want to see if we can get more placements. Okay, so 
here let me just zoom in for you okay so here we've got mercury actually mercury is the planet of communication and the rational mind it rules your thinking process i do also want to figure out what zodiac sign that we've got for cancer with their soulmate we've got libra right here so we definitely have this mercury libra 10th house type of energy which shows balance when it comes to their thoughts which helps them to create a not i wouldn't say a facade but just a public image that is super respectable so that is the connection that we have here when we look at these aspects of your soulmate so let's move a little further into your reading shall we i want to see what your soulmate would say right now your soulmate right now would say i achieve with integrity yeah, your soulmate doesn't just look respectable, they are a respectable person. Integrity and their moral compass is very important to them. They would never go behind someone's back and close a business deal, for example. They would never cheat, they would never lie, they would never deceive. Their integrity is one of the most important things to them. Next up, your soulmate would say, I honor virtue. So this kind of goes in line with, I achieve with integrity. They don't want success if it was built on grounds that aren't ethical. They don't want public praise if they got it for something that they're not proud of. And I see here within the solar calm that they've got this clarity of exactly who they want to be. And now it's just about bringing that forth. Now it's just about making that a reality. So my fellow Cancerians, if you envision yourself, your dream self right now, what that looks like, what he or she wears, what they do for a living, what happens in your day-to-day -day life, how you dress, how you style your hair, what perfume that you put on, where you live, just envision that. And now know that your soulmate, they're doing the exact same thing and that's what they're going after. They have a very clear depiction of this. So if your depiction is a little murky, know that your soulmate is going to teach you how to really hone that thought of who you want to be and where you're going. I see here within Pluto, which is also known as the Plutoid, I wouldn't call this a planet. So let's not place Pluto in the planet category. Let's just look at it as a heavenly body, okay? So within Pluto, I can see that we've got this rebirth. We've got a very interesting romantic life, a very interesting uh, behind closed doors situation here. And I want you to know within Pluto that your person, your soulmate, is someone who loves to get freaky in the sheets, okay? There's no other way to put it. They like a little nasty situation. I see here within Pluto that they're not afraid to try new things. And this is just overall something that they simply enjoy and that they want to engage in with you. Let's move further into your prediction. So we've got the Great Hammerhead. The Great Hammerhead corresponds to number 11, which is a master number, and it actually stands for getting ready to win and understanding that you're stronger than you know. This is your soulmate's motto. They are constantly ready to win because they just believe they're a winner. Every day they wake up, they say to themselves, I'm a winner. I'm stronger than I ever gave myself credit for. By the way, this is my new Below the Surface Oracle deck. The link is in the description box. Check it out. I also show it during the intro of this video. It is limited edition. It comes in a gorgeous collector's box with a guidebook and a journal. That's all included in this deal. Um, so make sure you check it out. Next up, we've got the Leafy Sea Dragon. Now, the Leafy Sea Dragon stands for everything serving a purpose. And I want you to know that your soulmate is someone who sees everything as a lesson and who sees a deeper meaning in all situations. For example, if they catch a cold or something like that, they aren't mad, they aren't worried, they just think to themselves, why did this happen? Maybe this is serving a purpose to remind me to take better care of my body, to give myself some time to rest, to recuperate, to regain my strength. Maybe they haven't been taking their personal hygiene as seriously, they haven't been washing their hands every time they've left the house. I mean, 
The reasons are plentiful, but your person is in a state of reflection constantly. That's what I'm trying to say here about your soulmate. So next we've got the Aventurin, and the Aventurin stands for creating your own luck. Your soulmate understands that in order to be successful and in order to win, you need to believe that you're a winner, first of all. And that creates your own luck. That creates your destiny. That creates a future that is desirable. And I see here within the carnelian, one thing about your soulmate is the fact that they constantly find creative ways to manifest what they desire into a reality. So whether that be creating a goal board, creating some sort of personalized meditation or mantra that they say to themselves every day that lets them win and that puts them in the headspace of creating an awesome life, I definitely want you to know here that they take full responsibility for everything. Even in arguments, your soulmate never looks at what you did wrong, my gorgeous Cancerian. They look at how they could have made things better, how they could have created an environment in which a disagreement or an argument didn't thrive. Let's ask spirit what their initials look like, what their name is. Okay, we've got quite a few letters here from spirit for you. So we've got A, E, O, I, and a blank one. Okay, do we literally only have these vowels here? Wow, interesting. Okay, so these are the letters that we've got within their name, and then we've got a blank little rune as well. So I want you to know that that could stand for a special character, and your soulmate's name is definitely longer and more intricate. Now, I want to move just, just a teeny, teeny, teensy, tiny bit further into your reading to figure out a little bit more about your soulmate. So what do they like to do for self-care? Your soulmate loves abundance planning. Okay, that makes a lot of sense with the manifestation board, with creating a vision or goal board, with creating the life that they desire. They feel as though it's fully 100% within their control. So they like to abundance plan. Let's see if there's another thing that they love doing for self-care that they would never skip out on. Okay, using their hands. Now, they can do so in a little bit of a nasty, freaky way, okay, behind closed doors like we spoke about earlier, but they may also be into pottery, into anything that has to do with clay, maybe planting as well, gardening, using their hands in a way that isn't just typing a computer keyboard. That is one thing that I see here about your soulmate. Now, my beautiful fellow Cancerians, this is the second part to your soulmate prediction that I've received for you, and I really hope you enjoyed it and that it brought you clarity and that it was fun. Make sure that you leave a globe emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you made it to the end and to represent the Cancer fam without leaving an obvious crab emoji in the comment section. So if you know, you know that a Cancerian was here when you see the little globe emojis below. So I'd like to thank you for being here and for spending this divine time and space with me. Don't forget to check out my latest Oracle deck and support the channel and the deck production. I'm sending you so much love and I can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming readings. Hello all of my beautiful Leo babies and welcome to the second even more intricate part of your soulmate reading. I hope that you enjoyed part one which you got to pick from during the intro of this video where you selected one of these four love potions. But now we'll talk all things Leo when it comes to love and your soulmate and this connection. So let's get into it. Lean back, relax and enjoy. First up, we've got soul expansion. So I see here that your soulmate is someone who is very understanding and they're very intelligent. They make connections between a lot of things that other people never realize and never consider. So for example, if they're having a disagreement with someone or a stranger is rude to them, they can make a connection, for example, between that person's posture and body language and the fact that they're insecure and maybe that is why they're lashing out at them. 
them. So these are the type of connections that your soulmate thinks about that a lot of other people may never even consider. Next up, we've got Sir Nunes. So within Sir Nunes, I can see that they're the type of person who has a huge passion and drive that gets them up every single day and allows them to do their absolute best. I can see here that they also have a very high lovemaking drive, so to say, my beautiful Leo babies. And they're the type of person who loves private, sensual moments with someone that they're absolutely crazy about, i.e. you. Within Sanat Kumara, I do want you to know here that they are bigger than life, so to say, grander than life, if that makes any sense. They are a very big personality. They are someone who says how they feel and lets you know what they're thinking about. And here within your reading right off the bat, we've got a lot of divine masculine energy. We've got a lot of very self-assured energy. Your person is someone who is confident. They're not insecure whatsoever. And they definitely aren't afraid to celebrate other people's success and celebrate underdogs in this lifetime as well. So let's see when precisely you will meet them. Okay, we've got the month of May for you. Now, the month of May is a great month for you to meet them because, of course, then you will get to spend a lot of time in summer with them. So let's also figure out precisely what day you will meet them on. Spirit, what day? will Leo meet their soulmate in May? Okay, we've got the number 16. Let's zoom in for you. There we go. We've got the 16th of May as your lucky day. I also want you to know that as a Leo, by default, your lucky numbers are actually 8 and 9. And your lucky day is Sunday, believe it or not. Let's see what else we can figure out about your soulmate. What do we have as an important placement in their birth chart? Let us know, spirit. We've got Taurus. Okay, so your person has strong Taurus energy. That is one thing that we've got right here. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out some other astrological correspondences for Leo and their soulmate. Ooh, okay, we've got the sun. So it's very clear that they've got their sun within Taurus. Your soulmate is a Taurus when it comes to your, their zodiac sign. You'll meet them on the 16th of May. So this could even be right around their birthday. Maybe you're even invited to their birthday party through a friend, but you don't even know that this is going to be your soulmate. This is the person that you're going to be with. And I want you to know here that this is really a fantastic time. And astrologically speaking, it's a good match because as a Leo, you are a fire sign. You've got very impulsive, big energy that a lot of people can sometimes find dramatic, but Taurus can deal with it. Taurus is very grounded. I see here within the angel aura quartz that your soulmate is someone who always sees the bright side and they prefer to not criticize themselves or others. They prefer to see the glass as half full instead of half empty. Your soulmate is someone who isn't afraid of change. They're not afraid of figuring out new ways to do things and I see here within the celestite that actually they're also someone who is super into self-care and soothing themselves soothing their soul they really just don't like stress that's the thing about your soulmate like they're a very calm person they bring relaxation to your life so let's see what type of self-care that your soulmate loves to indulge in that you may do together okay we've got connect with your womb <laughs> you may interpret this as you will <laughs> oh my beautiful leos so if there is a womb involved in this relationship with your soulmate you you know what they like to do okay but maybe they also just want to connect with your feelings with your emotionality with the plans that you have when it comes to for example forming a family next up we've got family I mean, our guides are really just here with us today. We were literally just speaking of family and then family shows up. 
I want you to know here that this is an important thing for your soulmate. This is something that they really value and cherish and they most likely also want with you. Your soulmate is someone who puts family above everything. They are the type of person who celebrates strong bonds within a family and overall they always try to avoid conflict with the people that they love and that they're closest to. Next up, we've got the, what is this? The scrying, the scrying mirror. So here within the scrying mirror, I do see here that they have a strong shadow side as well. So they have a light side and a shadow side. So maybe they're kind of a little kinky, my beautiful Leo babies. Maybe they have like this side to them that not many people know. But don't be worried, this is not like a negative thing, it's not a dangerous thing, it's just that they have things that they're working through, demons that haunt them as well, just as everyone else. And here within in bulk, I can see that they are learning about this day in and day out, right? They're awakening to the fact that they're just human, they make mistakes, and they're allowed to have a dark side, they're allowed to have some difficult relationships not only within themselves but also with other people and your soulmate is really kind of learning to accept themselves more and love themselves more at this point let's move further into it with my new unreleased below the surface oracle deck i can't wait for you to receive your copies in april when it officially launches so we've got the candy basslet i can see that your soulmate is someone who keeps the standard between you and them very high. They don't like low effort situations or relationships. To them, it's important to put their best foot forward. They always want to try to do the most in a relationship effort-wise and to show you that they not only know your worth, but they also want to show you that they know their worth because they'd never want to be in a relationship that isn't so serious and important to them that they would always try their absolute best. I see here within the black tip reef shark that your soulmate is someone who doesn't like to talk too much with really anyone but you. <laughs> That's what we've got in the black tip reef shark. They like to stay in shallow waters they feel as though superficial is enough with most people that they don't need to get into too much of a conversation with most individuals because a lot of people are also just not ready to hear the truth, right? Next up, we've got the orca pod. So within the orca pod, I can see that your soulmate is all about working together. They are all about teamwork, making the dream work. They understand that in order to accomplish some great things, sometimes you just need to put a lot of creative and really amazing people together in order to make things happen that would just be too much work on you know one person's shoulders i'm intuitively going to see what spirit has to say when it comes to their initials okay so oh when it comes to their name we've got quite a few letters here so we've got l o o n s Okay, so these are the letters within their name and their initials, all of my beautiful Leo babies. I want to just add one more little detail into your soulmate reading, because why not? And Spirit is definitely calling to add one more little detail into your reading. Okay, the latter. Don't give up on your soulmate, okay? When you meet them, they have by far not reached the heights and the successes that they're meant to. Your soulmate is someone who is going to climb towards success single-handedly. They're going to be more successful than anyone ever envisioned, than they even envisioned. So stick by their side, okay? Work it out when things get tough because I definitely see here that your soulmate is someone that you're going to be so proud of and live an amazing life with. So all of my beautiful Leo babies, this is the reading that I received for you. I hope that you enjoyed it. Make sure that you leave a little lion emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you were here, that you received the second part of your soulmate prediction and that you enjoyed it. 
Thank you so much for spending this divine time and space with me, and I can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming readings. Oh, and don't forget to check out the Below the Surface Oracle deck below. It's linked in the description box. Get on that pre-order list, because I can't guarantee for anything once it's actually launched. I'll speak to you next time. Hello, all my gorgeous Virgo babies, and welcome to the second, even more intricate part of your soulmate pick a card reading. I hope that you enjoyed part one where you got to pick from one of these four love potions, but now in part two, we're gonna get into all of the nitty gritty details about your soulmate and your connection to them. We're gonna talk about things such as their zodiac sign, when you will meet them, the precise date. I mean, we're getting really into detail here. So lean back, relax, and enjoy my beautiful Virgo child. So first up, we've got Hilarion as well as Sir Nennis. I definitely see a lot of divine masculine energy right off the bat in your soulmate. And here within Hilarion, I can see that your soulmate is someone who really loves your sensitivity. Your soulmate is someone who is more of a quiet, reserved person. They like to take their space and time to recharge and heal. And you are basically like the only person that they can spend a lot of time with and not get annoyed. But there's a reason why you guys are soulmates, right? And I do also want you to know here within Hilarion that your soulmate is someone who is very supportive. They are someone who likes to get to the bottom of any issues that you may be experiencing and work through those things with you. Not just listen and say, hmm, okay, that sucks. But no, actually actively helping you find a way to overcome challenges. Here within Sir Nunes, I see that your soulmate is someone who has a lot of passion and drive. They've got passion and drive for their career and their goals, but I definitely also want you to know that they are a very sensual and, um, how should I say, a very... Um, someone who likes physical touch, okay, someone who likes to be close to you in a physical sense and who just overall loves to be intimate with their partner. That's one thing that I can see here within your soulmate right off the bat. I want to figure out precisely when you're most likely to meet them. Okay, we've got the month of January for you as well as March. So these are the most likely months for you to be meeting a soulmate. I want you to know here that January and March are definitely good times for something new to begin because by the time we've hit the middle of the year, there is some trust. You know one another a little better, even though you have that feeling like you've known each other for lifetimes, right? That's that soulmate feeling. I see that it will definitely be beneficial to have gotten to know each other at the start of the year. So as the year progresses, you can plan things together, such as trips, such as what you're gonna do next to solidify your relationship. I wanna ask Spirit for the month of January, what day that Virgo is supposed to meet their soulmate. So Spirit, let us know, we've got the number 10. Now, all of my beautiful Virgos, the 10th of January is what we've got here. So I also want to figure out precisely when during the month of March that Virgo is supposed to meet their soulmate spirit. Please bring some clarity when it comes to these matters. Ooh, okay, we've got the first. So the number one is clearly a good number when it comes to meeting your soulmate. And just as a little bit of extra information for you, as a Virgo, you're an earth sign, but you knew that. And I want you to know here that your lucky numbers by default are actually five and three. And your lucky day by default is actually Wednesday. So let's move a little further into this reading. I want it figure out what kind of placements we're dealing with here when it comes to your soulmate spirit. Bring Virgo clarity, please. Ooh, okay, we've got Gemini, strong Gemini placements within your soulmate. There we go. I definitely also want to get into a little bit of a planetary situation here. So spirit, please clarify more about Virgo's soulmate. So this symbol actually corresponds to Mars. Mars is the planet of independence and also competition. It is the planet of getting things done, which has a lot of masculine energy, which really feeds into what we spoke about with Hilarion and Sir Nenis, and your person having a lot of masculine energy. 
Now, your person may not just be a Gemini. They may also have Gemini placements within Mars. But I want to move further into your reading so we can just get more information about your soulmate. My beautiful Virgo. Oh, okay. My gorgeous Virgos is what I wanted to say. So let's see what we've got here. We have a few cards that popped right out of the pile. I will start off with Melchizedek for you. So Melchizedek shows me here that your soulmate is someone who is very intelligent. They're not only street smart, they're also book smart. They have a great academic history. They've got to some great schools, maybe even gotten scholarships. They're the type of person who feels as though they're a student for life. And this is a great person to be with. This is a great soulmate to have because that means that they're constantly learning. They never feel as though they already know everything or like they're the smartest person in the room. Next up, I want to continue on with Katumi. Now, Katumi shows me here that the person, your soulmate, is someone who can overanalyze situations, and even though they maybe know the answer, maybe they already in their gut feeling can sense right from wrong, they still kind of try to justify everything with rationality. So your soulmate has to learn to trust their intuition more. They have to learn a little more that it doesn't matter whether it fits into the narrative of being rational or not. If they feel something, it's valid. But maybe that's also why you're soulmates, because you give them reassurance about this topic. But let's get further into it. So we've got Master Jesus next, and I definitely want you to know here that all spiritual and religious beliefs are welcome on my channel, and we read these cards as what they mean not in a religious sense whatsoever. So just see Master Jesus as any other old name. So here we've got the card that represents forgiveness. And I see that your soulmate is someone who is on the path of light, love, and forgiveness. They have not had an easy upbringing and it is now up to them to forgive people who have hurt or even harmed them. Father healing is an important topic for your soulmate because they struggle with the relationship that they've had with the fatherly figure or figures in their life. If they had step parents, there will be more than one. I see here within Mercury that your soulmate is someone who does not keep anything in anymore. They speak up and they do so with love in order to be heard and they don't keep anything on the inside any longer because they know that when you keep a weight on your chest, when you don't say what it is that you feel and you're going through and you're not honest about these things, it can really start to weigh you down and even create physical ailment in some instances. So I do see here that your soulmate is very aware of that and that's something that they are trying to avoid at all costs and they've been silenced for a long time. So your soulmate has learned to use their voice and has finally found their voice. Let's see what your soulmate is most likely to tell you. So first up, we've got I am peaceful. That's something your soulmate is most likely going to say to you to describe themselves. So they are a very peaceful person. They're the type of person who doesn't like conflict. They're the type of person who values using their time for positivity and to just chill and be in a good place. They don't like gossip or conflict whatsoever. Another thing they would say to you about themselves to describe themselves is that they act respectfully of others. So whether it's other people's possessions, whether it's other people's time, your soulmate would say to you that they are a very respectful person. They're the type of person who has a lot of consideration for others and they try to be compassionate and empathetic. And that may come from a place of there being lack of precisely those attributes for them. Because we spoke about how they had a bit of a challenging time with their fatherly figure growing up. I want to see how your soulmate chooses to indulge in self-care or chooses to do things for themselves and what they just love to do most to reconnect and ground themselves. Okay, we've got make an altar. So your soulmate is someone who has a little altar, a little space where they live, 
where they keep things that mean something to them in a very spiritual way. So they may also be very religious, but I want you to know that they most likely have like a candle, some incense, maybe a depiction, just a space where they can relax, where they can pray, so to say, and where they can maybe also meditate and just be reminded of what's really meaningful to them in this life. And these gentle reminders just show that your soulmate is someone who is quite reflective and who's pretty mature. Next up, we've got alone time. So I believe we already mentioned this, that your soulmate is someone who needs to retreat to recharge and heal. We spoke about that in Hilarion. And this showing up in the form of their self-care routine is definitely a sign that we're spot on about your soulmate, really. They love their alone time. They love to just relax without any interruptions and without feeling like they are pressured to say or do something. So lastly, I would like to use my new unreleased below the surface oracle deck. All the info about this deck is in the description box. And also during the start of this video, I've got a timestamp below. I show you everything that this deck comes with because it is really, really amazing and beautiful. So let's move into it. We've got the flying Gernard. So I can see here that your soulmate is someone who can get very emotionally attached, okay? Emotions running high is something that they experience when they're around people who don't really serve their inner peace. And that's why it's so important for them to only spend time with people who have the same goal as they do, to lead a peaceful and happy, fulfilled existence. And they often just ask themselves before they get emotionally invested, is it even worth it? So that's where the very rational part of your soulmate comes out and comes to play because they often just say to themselves, well, if I'm not going to remember this three months or three years from now, is it really worth getting upset over? And that is where I can see that the answer is often a no. Next up, we've got the longhorn cowfish. Now the longhorn cowfish shows me that your soulmate is someone who loves to give valuable gifts to people. So if gift giving, gift receiving, so to say, is part of your love language, my beautiful Virgo. Know that you will feel very fulfilled when it comes to this aspect with your soulmate. Your soulmate is all about shiny new things. Now, that doesn't mean that they're irresponsible financially, but if they can, they will spoil you. They will give you something that's of amazing quality. So they're all about quality over quantity. Your soulmate is the type of person who would rather give you one thing that is really valuable and of amazing quality than give you a lot of little things that are maybe just not handcrafted or made with as much attention to detail. So they are definitely a sucker for luxury items and things that are beautifully made, collector's items as well, and things that just increase in value over time. And those are also the types of things that they're going to give you as gifts. Now, all of my beautiful Virgo babies, this is the reading that I received for you. And I really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it insightful. Feel free to let me know down below in the comment section by leaving a little gift box emoji down there. That way you can let me and others know that you are here and that you represent the Virgo family. Also, don't forget to get on the below the surface pre-orders list because when this deck officially launches in April, I can tell you there won't be many pieces left because the pre-orders list is already pretty stuffed. So make sure that you secure your deck if you want one of these beautiful ocean themed oracle decks, which I promise you, you will be blown away by the attention to detail with these cards. So thank you for being here, my gorgeous Virgo baby. Know that I'm sending you so much love and so many hugs, and I can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming readings. Hello all of my gorgeous Libra babies and welcome to the second even more personalized part of your soulmate reading. So I hope that you enjoyed part one where you got to pick from one of these four potions during the intro 
of the video, but now we'll talk all things Libra when it comes to your soulmate. So all you need to do is lean back, relax, and enjoy. We'll figure out some parts of their birth chart, as well as when you'll meet them and lots of other fun little details. So first up, we've got the Master Buddha. We've got Faith, as well as Serapis Bay. So we'll go through it together card by card, figuring out exactly how this relates to your soulmate. So let's start off with Master Buddha, shall we? So I can see that your soulmate is someone who trusts their inner voice, and when it comes to relationships, they like to have a very deep connection. They don't like to keep things surface level. They don't like to stay in shallow waters. For them, it's important that the person with whom they spend the most time with is someone that they have a very deep connection with. Everyone else, sure. We can stay surface level, but not in a relationship. Next up, we've got faith. So I do see here that your soulmate is someone who's usually always pretty calm, which may be precisely what you need, Libra, because as a Libra, you can be pretty indecisive, but you still crave balance. So having a soulmate who is pretty calm and grounded and great at making decisions can be what you need in order to just soothe your soul and your heart a little more. I see within faith that your soulmate is someone who sees the good and the light in the world, despite there always being some tragic incidents and difficult situations politically as well on planet Earth. Your person sees hope and feels as though the only way for things to get better is through compassion and empathy. I see here within Serapis Bay that when it comes to your soulmate, they are someone who doesn't like gossip. They don't like anything that keeps them in a challenging space mentally where they're just overthinking or they've got negative thoughts that are just constantly on repeat. Your soulmate is someone who's all about rising above darkness. They're all about figuring out a way to see things from a positive viewpoint. They are a glass is half full instead of half empty type of individual. And just overall, your soulmate is definitely someone who feels as though the more people can be themselves, the more peace we'll have on this planet and the more we will be able to just love each other really and stop conflict and hurt, misery, suffering. I want to figure out precisely when you will meet your soulmates. So, ooh, okay, we've got two months in which you're most likely to meet them, which is February as well as September. I also want to figure out on what days you're precisely going to meet your soulmate, just so you have as much information as possible. So we will ask Spirit about the precise day, first of February, then of September. So Spirit... When is Libra going to meet their soulmate in February? Okay, we've got the fourth for you. Let's zoom in on the die right here. Okay, the fourth of February for you. And I want to move a little more deeply into this by figuring out the date that you will meet your soulmate in September. So Spirit, let Libra know when they're going to meet their soulmate in September. Ooh, okay, we've got the 13th for you, actually. So the 13th is definitely a very superstitious type of number, and I want you to know that as a Libra, actually your lucky day is Friday. So if there's a Friday the 13th, don't fear it. I definitely want you to understand that there's a lot of superstitious belief around this being a challenging day, but it doesn't necessarily need to be for everyone. Furthermore, as a Libra, by default, your lucky numbers are six and nine. Your special colors are lavender and blue, which are the colors of romance, of refinement, of harmony. And one of your most likable traits is said to be your charm. So I want to see exactly what placements that you need to look out for when it comes to your soulmate. So first up, we've got the moon right here for you. So I definitely want us to figure out more about your soulmate's moon sign placement. Spirit, what is Libra's soulmate's moon sign? Hmm, okay, so your soulmate's moon is in Virgo, which is an earth sign that is very detail-oriented and dependable. That's one thing that I can see here when it comes to your soulmate. I also want to figure out 
what their sun sign is. So Spirit, let us know what Libra soulmate's sun sign is. Mm, okay, so here, oh, let's zoom in for you. We've got Aries, actually, the symbol of Aries, the symbol of the ram, as you can see, which is a fire sign, which is a sign that is very outgoing, that is ruled by Mars. It's very enthusiastic, this sign, very energetic and pioneering and assertive, which makes a lot of sense as we were talking about decision making and how your soulmate tends to be really good at this. So let's speak to your soulmate right now. Let's figure out what they would say about themselves if they had a chance to introduce themselves to you. What would they say? They would say, I keep the waters pure. Your soulmate is someone who is very honest. To them, it's very important to be upfront about emotions and feelings and what you're going through. So they're just as open to you as they expect you to be towards them. To them, it's very important that there are no lies and no deceit in any relationships, whether these be business relationships or romantic ones. And another thing they would say to you is that they're peaceful. Your soulmate is trying to communicate to you that they are all about giving things time to cool off. They are all about peace and harmony. They don't want to be in situations in which arguments get heated. They're the type of person who definitely just wants a very relaxed type of relationship with whomever they're with. Romantically speaking, when it comes to friendships, your soulmate is definitely someone who values their peace and their serenity. Next up, we've got the black kyanite. Now, the black kyanite shows me that your soulmate is someone who may seem like they will put up with anything, but that's actually not the case. They've set really strong boundaries with friends and family who have taken them for granted in the past. So they're very mature when it comes to that. They can love someone from afar. And that's where we've got in I Keep the Waters Pure, this connection of honesty as well. So they will tell someone why they don't want to hang with them or why they've distanced themselves and why they had to set up boundaries. They're absolutely not afraid to be very upfront about these things. Now, within the Malachite, I can see here that your soulmate is in a place where they're going through a transformation. They can feel as though now is time for the next big change in their life. Now it's time for a new cycle. They're maybe thinking of doing something such as starting a family, getting into a serious relationship, switching jobs. You get the idea. They just know that transformation is something that has to happen because they've been in this space that they're currently in for a while. Now, let's move further into your reading using the unreleased below the surface Oracle deck, which I created all the info to this deck. If you want to get your hands on one of these is below in the description box. I also show it off at the start of this video during the intro. So feel free to tune into that as well. But let's move further into your reading. So we've got the blue whale and the master number 44. As you can see here, we've got this symbol of fulfillment. The blue whale is all about the ultimate fulfillment, dreaming big and everything working out. I see that your soulmate is someone who will bring you this ultimate almost love potion, if you will, that allows you to feel so fulfilled and pursue your dreams, your goals, your aspirations, because you feel as though everything will work out, especially if you've got such an awesome teammate and lover by your side who truly supports you and shows you that they support you. In the bottle-nosed dolphin, I can see that your soulmate is someone who likes to have a good time. They like to celebrate and socialize. They like to join in with other people. Your soulmate is most likely more outgoing than you are, and they're the type of person who likes to always also just celebrate you. So if you've got a birthday coming up, they will plan the whole thing. They will plan the surprise. They will plan the celebration. They will invite everyone. And if you don't have many people to invite, they will literally invite their own friends and find people to invite. So that's the type of person that they are. And I see here within the great hammerhead that when it comes to your soulmate, they are stronger than they've given themselves credit for. And they're always on ready to win. They always expect the best. Your soulmate 
is this kind of relentlessly positive force that always expects things to go well. And as a result, things do go well for them. As a result, they are successful. They do attract amazing things into their lives that other people may struggle to even deem as being possible. So I want to see what your soulmate does for self-care, what they do in order to soothe themselves. So we've got look for fairies. They love to not only daydream, but also to be out in the nature and to just see if there are any new things going on. So they love to just explore the different plants, the different animals that we see here within nature. They love to overall be curious. They have a little bit of a superstitious part to them. They definitely believe that there are other forms of life that are yet to be discovered by us or to really be verified, but they don't think that we are the only ones within this universe who exists. So they're into all of these theories of different types of life forms that have yet to be truly discovered or where we still need to figure out what evidence we have and how reliable these sources are. Next up, we've got writing a gratitude list. So your soulmate is definitely someone who is very grateful for everything that they have. They love to write gratitude lists and they maybe even own a gratitude journal as well as they're the type of person who never takes anything for granted. So maybe they grew up without having very much. So now, even though they've gotten themselves to a better spot, they still will never take anything in life for granted whatsoever. So I will now allow for spirit to, we've already gotten a rune that popped out. We've got the letter E um, to let us know what their initials are, what their name might be. So let's see what Libra soulmate's name looks like. We've got E, C, an S for you. So look out for these initials when it comes to your soulmate, my beautiful Libras. So we are now at the end of the second part of your reading, which I really hope that you enjoyed and that you found it insightful. Let me know below in the comment section by leaving a little dove emoji down below to let me and others know that you are in fact a Libra baby and that you made it to the end of the second part of your reading. Don't forget to check out my Below the Surface Oracle deck, which is going to be released very soon. I'm so proud of this deck. I've been working on it for over a year, and it's just beautiful to see it come to fruition. I'd like to thank you for being here, for spending this divine time and space with me. I'm sending you so much love and so many hugs, and I can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming predictions. Hello, my beautiful Scorpio babies, and welcome to the second, even more personal part of your soulmate reading. I hope that you enjoyed part one, where you got to pick during the intro from these four different love potions, but now we're going to talk all things Scorpio and also figure out your soulmate's zodiac sign and when you're going to meet them, all of the little in-betweens that you may want to know more of. So first up, we've got the Holy Amethyst, which represents your soulmate soulmate being someone who is able to focus on what they want. So you will know that they want to be with you as they will pursue you relentlessly. I see here within Cernanus that they are someone who is very passionate and driven. They do not back down in the face of adversity. So if you're giving them a little bit of a green light, they're going to do whatever they can in order to impress you and in order to ensure that they show you how much they care and they really want to be with you. I do want you to know here in Cernanus that your soulmate is someone who has strong sensual powers. This is someone who loves to be intimate. This is someone who loves alone time with you. And I definitely also want you to understand here within the Holy Amethyst that even if you need time to warm up to them, they will give you that time because they want you to ultimately feel comfortable. Here within Cernanus, it becomes very clear that passion to them has everything to do with both of you enjoying being together intimately. I see here within the Archangel Michael that your soulmate is someone who gives you a safe space to express who you are. And I want you to know that they allow you 
to just rest in divine feminine energy and it doesn't matter who you identify as divine feminine energy is soft and the only way you can allow yourself to submit to that is by feeling safe and secure and you can only do that of course in the presence of someone who provides that, of someone who allows you to just lean back and know that certain things are taken care of or certain dangers aren't there, where you can feel comfortable in your body without fear of them judging or thinking anything negatively of it. I see here within Quan Yin that when it comes to your soulmate, they are a very caring and compassionate individual. They have a strong desire for their own family and children, and I see here that they always choose to do what's right for everyone that's involved. They never do anything just out of a selfish place. They always offer a helping hand as well. So whenever anyone needs help, they are there to provide it. And this can sometimes also get under your skin, I'm sure, because you are the type of person as a Scorpio who can be intense. You're very passionate and emotional. You're someone who is also very kind of like subtle, but at the same time, if you don't like something, you're going to be honest and upfront about it. And if there is someone who is asking your soulmate for help constantly and you feel as though they're actually flirting with your person, oh, you're not going to like it, but you're going to know that your soulmate, which may be your partner one day, actually just genuinely is trying to help and doesn't even see that this other person is trying to flirt with them. So when it comes to the month of the year in which you're going to meet them, the highest probability is during the month of May. And I also want to figure out precise days for you, just so you can get a little bit more of an idea of when your soulmate is coming towards you. So Spirit, when is Scorpio's soulmate coming towards them in May? Okay, we've got the 19th for you. The 19th of May is the most probable day for you to get together with your soulmate to meet them. I also want to see what type of placements that you want to look out for in their birth chart. So Spirit, let us know what Scorpio needs to know about their soulmate. So here within the symbol, we've actually got the North Node. So let's figure out precisely what your soulmate's sort of quest in life is, as that's what the North Node gives us information about. So Spirit, let us know what Scorpio's soulmate's quest is according to their North Node. Ooh, okay. So we've got the symbol of Pisces and pairing that with the North Node, it becomes clear that your soulmate is actually someone whose quest is to find enlightenment. Your soulmate's quest is to get to a place of this universal understanding of other people, the planet, and all of the connections, all of the in-betweens. So your person has a strong need to continuously learn. They like to grow. Your soulmate is someone who is heavily into self-development and also just understanding and feeling compassion towards all living beings. When it comes to their energies, they have a good mixture between masculine and feminine energy. When it comes to being intimate, they have a very kind of masculine energy of going for it. But when it comes to speaking, when it comes to all of the in-betweens, they're definitely a little bit more on the feminine side of just receiving you, right? Of just listening to you, of just taking in what it is that you're saying. So I want to figure out what your soulmate would say to you right now if they had the opportunity to describe who they are to you. So let's see what their words would be. We've got, I create harmony. So your soulmate is someone who would say to you that they are the creator of harmony. They are the glue that holds people together. Maybe they've always kind of been the glue that held their family together. And they're the type of person who just wants to lead a life with as little friction as possible. What else would they say to you about themselves? Let's find out. We've got, I relate in peace. So they're the type of person 
who tries to not judge as much as humanly possible. Of course, we've all got preconceived notions. We've all got judgments. As much as we try to not judge other people, it is impossible for our thoughts to not be there, right? As much as you will say to yourself that you want to be open-minded about For example, someone who has purple hair, but you've had bad experiences in the past with people who have got purple hair. Even if you're forcing yourself to be open-minded about this particular individual with whom you've never had an encounter, you know that subconsciously your mind is maybe already in a little bit of a defense mode or maybe even a little bit scared or intimidated that the same thing is going to happen that happened to you in the past with purple haired individuals. Just to provide you with an example of precisely what I mean. So your person understands that It's impossible to have absolutely no judgment whatsoever. However, they try their hardest to be as open-minded as they possibly can be because they also know what it's like to be judged. They know what it's like for people to have preconceived notions about them. Maybe it is because of their looks. Maybe it's because of their heritage, their background. They know that it's not easy when people have already made up their mind about you. And it doesn't matter whether it is in a sense of thinking, well, you've had it easy all your life because you come from this background or this family or this zip code, or well, you must not be that great of a person because you didn't attend this school or you don't have these credentials. So open-mindedness is definitely something that is very important when it comes to your soulmate in order to avoid continuing to perpetuate the cycle. Next up, we've got deep breathing. So when it comes to self-care, your soulmate loves to engage in deep breathing. Your soulmate is someone who is very much into breath work and being in solitude and meditating. Your soulmate loves this type of self-care where they don't have to be performative, they don't have to be a certain person in front of other individuals, they like to just be by themselves, and they also love using their hands when it comes to a self-care routine. So that could be creating things out of clay, it could be pottery, quite literally as we have depicted here, but it could also be building things, right? It could be woodwork, it could be metalwork, it could be working with glass and just different different substances and different things where they can use their hands in order to make something from scratch. So they are a pretty creative person. They're pretty versatile. You may not even see them as someone who was capable of this type of arts and crafts, but nevertheless, it's just another little hidden hobby that makes your soulmate so special and makes them kind of stand out from the crowd. Next up, we've got the fool. So your soulmate is starting from scratch at this point in their life. They're embarking on a new journey. So starting a new job and also starting afresh in their love life is one thing that I can see here. And they're excited for the journey. That's what the fool is about. The fool is all about not knowing where difficulties or challenges may lie and just kind of in a way almost being naive about how good things are going to go. And often that's like a really great way to be actually because the less you kind of get in your head about what could go wrong, the more you will actually manifest things that are going perfectly well. Next up, we've got the Three of Cups. Now the Three of Cups shows me get-togethers, parties, celebrations. I see here that your soulmate is someone who likes to have a good time. Your soulmate is someone who likes to spend time with friends and family. They do like to go out to a certain extent, not too crazy much because they do enjoy their alone time, but you're maybe going to meet your soulmate at a birthday party or some sort of company dinner, just a get-together where people are in a relaxed head space where they're having a good time and it doesn't feel so forced so if you are currently for example online dating or something like that I want you to know that chances are really high that you are going to be amongst one of those people who met their soulmate in person like when we see in those romance movies when people meet like in the grocery store and things like that yeah that's most likely going to be you meeting your soulmate so that does still exist and you're probably going to be part of 
those individuals who experience that. The Six of Swords here shows me that your soulmate is going to completely change how you view the world. Your soulmate is going to see you as someone who is very flexible and they're going to talk to you about different things you maybe never considered. Different issues in regards to the economy and the environment and they're really going to help you kind of see things from a viewpoint that you haven't considered and broaden your horizon. Now the Queen of Swords shows me that your soulmate is someone who is very educated and very smart. They are street and book smart, but they don't use that knowledge in order to ever make anyone else feel less than or make anyone else feel dumb. They're the type of person who has friends from every walk of life and it is very important for them to share knowledge that they have that they think would be helpful for certain people, but at the same time not seem as though they are trying to force something or like they know better or like they're lecturing someone that is not the vibe that they ever go for that's what i see in the queen of swords because they understand that that's just going to do the opposite that's just going to close people off to what they're trying to say so i'll move even more deeply into your reading now using the below the surface oracle deck i mean just look at the sides of these cards i mean it looks like a ocean, doesn't it? It is so beautiful. It is even more stunning in person. I cannot get over this unreleased deck of mine. I speak about it during the intro of this video. I've got timestamps for it below if you want to see it with its box, its guidebook, and everything that it comes with. And also, of course, if you want to secure your copy upon release, the link to that is in the description box as well. So next up, we've got the Hermit Crab. Now in the Hermit Crab, I can see that your soulmate, is someone who always reassures you that you're safe in their presence and that your existence is enough. You don't need to accomplish X, Y, or Z. You don't need to have a certain number in your bank account. You don't need to have had certain credentials in order to be worthy of being loved and listened to and seen as someone who is valuable. So your soulmate is definitely someone who always reminds you of your worth and who gives you a safe space, who gives you a space that you can come to without feeling like you haven't done enough or accomplished enough. They are allergic to allowing you to feel like you have to earn time to rest or earn time to be looked at as someone who is worthy of respect. I see here within the African lionfish that your soulmate is someone who believes in the power of choice and that it is your choice to place your attention on not only gratitude but also winning, also creating the life that you desire and that it's your choice to create a type of relationship and environment in which you can thrive for a very, very long time. Time. So all of my beautiful Scorpio babies, in case you didn't know this, by the way, your lucky day is Tuesday and your lucky numbers are two and four. And in case you didn't know, animals that are ruled by Scorpio are insects and crustaceans. And I definitely want you to know here that you're a very sharp zodiac sign. So to watch your words when you're around your soulmate as you may easily hurt them, but they're a very understanding and compassionate person. So when it comes to communication, that's definitely something that's pretty on point with your soulmate. So my beautiful Scorpio babies, we've made it to the end of the second part of your prediction. Thank you for being here and for spending this divine time and space with me. Leave a little scorpion emoji below in the comment section to represent the Scorpio fam and to let me and others know that you watched to the end. Furthermore, don't forget to check out my new oracle deck. It's also linked in the description box. If you collect gorgeous oracle and tarot decks, this is going to be your new favorite in your collection. I assure you of that. I promise you that so make sure that you don't miss out on this i'm sending you so much love my beautiful scorpio baby and i can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming readings hello all my gorgeous sagittarius babies and welcome to the second even more intricate part 
of your soulmate prediction. I hope that you enjoyed part one, where you got to pick from these four divine love potions during the start of this video. But now let's talk all things Sagittarius and soulmates, shall we? So let's figure out precisely what's going on with your soulmate, what we've got going on when it comes to their zodiac sign, when you will meet them, just all the details you could need and want. So first up, we've got the Miriam. Within the Miriam, I can see for Sagittarius that your soulmate is someone who sees the light in everything and who is open to figuring out a relationship, even if it's, for example, long distance, or even if at the beginning, it's just a little bit patched together, okay? So if you have very different work schedules, for example, or you live in different towns and cities, they still feel as though at the end of the day, if the love is there, they can make it work and they can somehow make things in a way that it will in the end come together and work out for true love, of course. Next up, we've got Mercury. So Mercury shows me that your soulmate is someone who has very phallic masculine energy when it comes to communication. They're very open. They're very direct. They speak up from a place of love, but they're not afraid to tell the truth, even if the truth is not something that people want to hear. Mercury shows me here that they're the type of person who chooses to not keep things bottled up. They choose to just be open and outgoing and honest about whatever it is that's bothering them. And Katumi shows me that They've been in relationships in the past where things were bottled up and kept hidden or a secret and they feel as though the best thing to do is to just be outspoken and use that wisdom that they have gathered from past relationships and connections in order to make this one between you and them better. So Katumi also shows me here that they're a very intuitive type of person. They feel as though all of the answers that they may be seeking could already be within, right? That all they need to do is drop into some deep meditation or into a space of simply knowing like, okay, if I need an answer, my guides, my angels are here and I can figure it out no matter the situation. They don't rely on external validation or external circumstances to tell them what to do or how to live life. Now let's see when you're most likely going to meet them. So we've got January for one for you. And then we've also got June when it comes to you meeting your soulmate. So January and June are the most probable months for you to meet your soulmate, my beautiful Sagittarius. And I want to move into even more detail when it comes to the days of the month where the probability is very high. So Spirit, let us know precisely when Sagittarius will meet their soulmate during the month of January. Okay, so we've got the 12th for you. Let me zoom in so you can see. We've got the number 12 right here for January, but I also want to figure out what number we've got for June, what day of the month that we've got. So Spirit, let us know what day of the month that Sagittarius will meet their soulmate during June. Okay, so we've got the number 8 here. I'll zoom in for you so you can see that we in fact did receive the number eight from your guides when it comes to the day in June when you will meet your soulmate. I definitely also want to figure out some placements when it comes to their birth chart. Ooh, okay, so here what we actually have, let me zoom in for you. Okay, what we actually have here is their north node. That's what this is symbolic of, as you can see. So I want to figure out precisely what sign their north node is in. So Spirit, let us know what sign that their north node is in. Okay, so here I believe we've got Sagittarius actually. Let's zoom in for you. Uh, okay. There we go. So Sagittarius within their north node shows that their quest in life is to gather and have as many experiences as possible. So your soulmate is someone who values and cherishes experiences over everything. They may not spend a lot of money on, for example, clothing, but what they will spend a lot of money on is travels, is experiences, seeing different things, 
and just leading a life where they can say to themselves, wow, I really lived fully. I really experienced so many awesome things that I'll be able to tell my children, my grandchildren, and that just overall kind of shows what I placed value on, which wasn't material things, but actually experiencing things and feeling things with my loved ones. Now, if your soulmate could speak to you right now, let's see what they would say about themselves and how they would describe themselves to you. I speak with good intent. That's one thing that your soulmate would say about themselves to you, that they always have good intent. They always feel in a sense as though the things that they're saying are coming from a place of wanting to do good, of wanting to kind of be the best version of themselves. And another thing they would say to you about themselves is that they're very accepting. If your soulmate had an opportunity to sit here and tell you who they are, they would tell you they're an accepting human being who doesn't feel as though people need to fit into a certain category or into a certain mold, that they're a very open-minded individual who wants people to be themselves first and foremost, whether that has to do with their sensual orientation or whether that has to do with how they prefer to lead their lives in general. Your soulmate is someone who is super, super accepting of anyone's spiritual and religious beliefs and background. I see here with in the nine of cups that your soulmate is also someone who is almost followed by good luck and good fortune really that's what i see here within the nine of cups your soulmate is an individual who absolutely loves their life who leads their life to the fullest and it reflects in the experiences that they're given in this lifetime the knight of wands shows me that they take action they don't overthink things and your soulmate is going to do the same thing in a relationship with you, okay? They are going to act on their feelings. If they feel like they love you and care about you and cherish you, they're going to show you. If they want to propose to you, they will do it. They're not gonna him and haw for years on end before they do something. They're gonna take action and they're gonna somehow find a way to make it the most beautiful experience ever. Next up, we've got the Princess of Swords. Now, the Princess of Swords shows me here that if there is one thing that they sometimes struggle with, it's just finding the right words when they're doing things in an impulsive manner. I see in the Princess of Swords that they sometimes tend to find it difficult to communicate precisely why they're doing something or how they're feeling, even though open communication is very important to them, it can sometimes still be a little challenging. And it's something where they're learning. I see here in The Fool that they're just at the beginning of their journey. They haven't had that many committed relationships. Your soulmate is figuring out how to communicate in a committed relationship, but they're definitely dedicated to doing the best that they possibly can. And that just brings a whole nother energy to a connection when you know someone is sincerely trying their best versus when someone is just, you know, doing whatever. And that's something that you'll really cherish when you meet your soulmate and when you're with them. I see here within the Moonstone that your soulmate is someone who is destined to live their purpose. So we did talk about how their purpose was to have a lot of amazing experiences that they have gathered throughout their lifetime. So when it comes to their profession, they are also in a position where they get to travel a lot, they get to experience a lot of different things. Where I see here in the agate that your soulmate is in a place where for them it's important to get back to balance because being out of whack, being out of balance is something that kind of just messes with their entire flow. And getting back to balance is something that they do by taking action, by having these different experiences. Your soulmate being really tired and ringed out and just kind of feeling as though everything is too much, that comes from a place of not having had different sceneries and backgrounds. When your soulmate is cooped up for too long, it makes them anxious, it makes them kind of unhappy, it makes them feel as though they're not doing what they're meant to do. So your soulmate definitely has this deep desire and drive to fulfill their life purpose, 
and to travel to as many places as they can, to experience as many things as possible, such as think to yourself like concerts, trying different jobs, trying out different sports as well, different hobbies. They just want to try everything at least once. So let's see what your soulmate likes to do when it comes to self-care. We've got drinking tea. Your soulmate is an avid tea drinker. They absolutely love to just have a little quiet moment to sip some tea. And I want you to know here that they probably also prefer tea over coffee as well. That's what their beverage of choices first thing in the morning or just throughout the day as well. And then we've also got reading. Okay, your soulmate really loves to read. They're a little bookworm. Okay, they most likely also have a very big private collection of books and literature. They like to continue educating themselves. That's one thing that I see here about your soulmate, my beautiful Sagittarius. And they are someone from whom you can learn a lot throughout the years, especially because for them, education doesn't just end once they're done with school, but it's something that they continue on with privately. They love to learn and as I already mentioned, try new things. I also want to figure out if we can get some initials when it comes to their name from Spirit. So Spirit, allow us to just figure out who Sagittarius will be with when it comes to their initials. Okay, we've got quite a few letters here for Sagittarius. So we've got the letter K, we've got I, we've also got a, as well as a blank rune. Well, this could also be Kai as a name, couldn't it? And the blank rune may stand for a special character, just overall something a little unusual within their name. So my gorgeous Sagittarius babies, I do want to just add one or two extra cards from my unreleased below the surface oracle. All the information to this oracle deck can be found in the description box as well as throughout the intro of this video. So let's see what we've got here when it comes to your soulmate. First up, we've got the great white shark, which also corresponds to the number one. Your soulmate is someone who takes action and goes for it. They believe in striking when the iron is hot and when opportunities present themselves. So they don't sit around and wait for the perfect moment. They just do and believe that everything will work out the way it should and will figure itself out. Next up, we've got the flying Gurnard. So I see here that your soulmate is someone who can be a little emotional, okay? They are someone who definitely has to ask themselves if it's worth it, if these battles are really worth fighting. So before they even get into a big discussion or an argument, they will just take a moment to ask themselves if it really matters because they don't like confrontation. They don't like arguments. They don't like when other people get emotional around them. So they prefer to just avoid unnecessary disagreements as much as they possibly can in order to keep the peace. But if something needs to be said, we do have Mercury, which is the planet and the person of communication and of just being honest and upfront, right? So my beautiful Sagittarius babies, this is the second part of your soulmate reading that I've received for you. And I really hope that you enjoyed this and that you found it insightful. Let me know below in the comment section by leaving a little lightning emoji in the comment section to let me and others know that you are a Sagittarius, that you made it to the end of this reading and that you claim it. I'm sending you so much love, so many hugs, and I can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming readings. Hello, all of my beautiful Capricorn babies, and welcome to the second part of your soulmate reading. I hope that you enjoyed part one where you got to choose from these beautiful love potions at the start of this video during the intro but now we will talk all things capricorn and your soulmate will figure out what their zodiac sign is when you will meet them and many more little details about your soulmate connection so i'm excited to get into it let's see who your soulmate is first up we've got the white eagle so they have this eldest in the family kind of vibe okay so if they've got siblings your soulmate is most likely the oldest one my beautiful capricorn baby and they are also the type of person who connects really deeply with their lineage and with their ancestors as well okay they've got this ancestor spirit guide connection and they're the one who helps heal family wounds and patterns they're 
they're like the glue that really keeps like their family together. And they're that one person that everyone comes to when they need advice. So they're a very mature person. They're most likely wise beyond their years. And even growing up as a kid, people always thought that they were older than they really were because of just how mature that they are. Now, maturity in children. There is no such thing as a mature child. Let's be real, Capricorn babies. There is no such thing as that. A mature child is often just a kid that learned to be quiet and deal with things because they couldn't rely on an adult or on someone else to do what needed to be done. So they just learned that it was either sink or swim and they learned to swim. And that's one thing that I can see about your soulmate that has made them so mature. So it's important that they have a safe space where they can also indulge in a little bit of childlike wonderment, so to say. So within the green Tara, I can see here that your soulmate is someone who is protected, they believe that they can move beyond a lot of limitations that other people feel they cannot move beyond, okay? So other people in their family may feel as though because of where they grew up, their heritage, whatever it is that's holding them back that they cannot accomplish greatness. But here with your soulmate, they feel as though they're destined for more and they feel as though they are protected by the universe, by God, their angels, their spirit guides, whatever it is that they choose to believe in. In El Moria, I can see here that your soulmate is also someone who feels as though there's always this cloak of protection and love that surrounds them. So they definitely have this divine connection to a higher power. They do not believe that it starts and ends with just earthly things. They definitely feel as though there is more to this life than just you and I and what we can see, feel, and touch here on earth. But I do also want you to know here within El Moria that the more that they look into this, the more that they feel as though they can't really make up their mind. Are they spiritual? Are they religious? What what do you want to believe in? So let's see when you are most likely to meet them. So we've got August as well as October. So these are your lucky months when it comes to meeting your soulmate. And I definitely also want to find out on precisely what day you are most likely going to meet them. So spirit, let Capricorn know which day they are most likely going to meet their soulmate. Okay, we've got the 19th for you right here. Let's zoom in. Okay, we've got the 19th for the month of August, but let's also figure out from Spirit what day in October Capricorn is most likely to meet their person, their soulmate. We've got the 11th for you. So we've got the 19th of August and the 11th of October for a soulmate meeting. I also want to find out precisely what their placements are in their birth chart. So over here, we've got some Aquarius energy, which is actually the sign that's right after you, my beautiful Capricorns. This is an air sign, which is very original, independent, and humanitarian, and can also be kind of rebellious, if you will. And when it comes to placements, let's see what spirit has to say. Okay, so here I believe we've got Jupiter for you. Let's make sure it's all crisp. So here within Jupiter, this is actually the planet of higher education, growth, communication. Aquarius in Jupiter, that's an interesting notion, but I definitely want you to just understand that Aquarius energy is important and their Jupiter placement affects who they are as a person and the way that they act and react. So let's move a little further into your reading. I want to figure out what your soulmate would say to you if they were here with you right now. So what would they say? They would say, I am open to love in various forms. So your soulmate is everything but desperate. So they've most likely actually even been single for a very long time. And that's because they're open to love in every form. They don't feel as though they need a romantic lover. They also feel really fulfilled by the love of friends and family. So they're not the type of person that always needs to be dating someone or always needs to be seeing someone. I definitely see here that they're open to receiving love, whether it be from friends, 
family, co-workers, animals. To them, love is something that comes in so many different forms, especially on a platonic level, that they don't put so much emphasis on a romantic type of love unless it feels right, unless it's with someone who they know truly means it and truly loves them. So what else would your soulmate say to you right now? Let's see, we've got I create harmony. So your soulmate is someone who is all about balance and harmony and doesn't like when there are any types of arguments or any types of petty situations, neither at their work nor in their personal life. Harmony is important for them, balance is important for them, and they feel as though anyone who does not have a harmonious life is difficult for them to vibe with because to them they feel as though harmony is something that you create it doesn't just happen and they put a lot of effort into making sure that everyone who they surround themselves with feels seen and heard so when someone is going through a tough time when it comes to harmony and family settings and so on your person, your soulmate is definitely giving them a bit of a side eye because they feel as though it could be self-inflicted. Moving further into your reading, we've got the Moonstone. So my beautiful Capricorns, the Moonstone is not only a stone that connects to your intuition, but it also enables you to live your purpose. And I see that when we relate that to your soulmate, this is a symbol of your soulmate living within their highest purpose, living within what they're supposed to be doing in this lifetime. And I want you to know here within the Moonstone that your soulmate is someone who has a job and an occupation that they absolutely love and would never want to be without. The Phantom Court shows me that they have tried different things. They have had different types of jobs and have also studied different things. Okay, when it comes to education, they've tried to have their major in many different fields. However, they found their purpose at this point and this is what they're pursuing. This is what they want to continue to do because your soulmate is someone who is all about intuition and feelings and doing what feels right, not what people say is right. So they're okay with switching things up, with embracing change until they find something that really works. Next up, we've got the turquoise. And now the turquoise shows me here that your soulmate is someone who prioritizes health. It's really important for them to stay mentally and physically healthy and sane and fit and attractive. So they work out, they eat healthily, they go to therapy, they meditate, they write gratitude lists. All of these things are important to them because they understand that in order to fully show up in a relationship, you've got to prioritize your health. You've got to prioritize making time for yourself so you can show up as the best version of you rather than just showing up as a random random Tuesday morning you that didn't take the time to meditate or to take care of yourself or to make your favorite green tea or whatever it is that hypes you up. Okay, so they often put themselves and their health first so they can show up more fully for others. The seven of pentacles shows me here that your soulmate is very much focused on projects that they've got right now when it comes to the earthly realms that they just need to be patient with. So maybe they invested in stocks or in something that grows over time and they just have to kind of stand back and watch watch it take off watch it grow watch it multiply itself the same goes for an investment into a business venture now of course they have to put in work but some of it is also just a game of patience and being disciplined and continuing on not giving up right and i see here within the eight of wands that there is a lot of quick motion that's going on in your soulmate's life at this point in time which is a little bit stressful for them that's also why they're prioritizing their health so much because when things are really stressful and moving very quickly if on top of that you are not prioritizing your health you are most likely going to burn out or it's most likely just going to be too much for you so i definitely want you to understand here within the eight of wands that your soulmate is going through a time of realizing that they have to prioritize themselves to a certain degree the crazier life gets 
and the faster things move because the more that happens, the more your body and your mind appreciates stability and thrives off of stability. So next we're gonna figure out what type of self-care practices that your soulmate loves connects with and thrives in so let's see what that is okay we've got sync with the moon your soulmate is someone who always knows whether it's a full moon a new moon they know when it's happening and what sign it's happening and sync with the moon shows me here that your soulmate is someone who really loves to do little new moon and full moon rituals where they are either manifesting the new or letting go of the old. And I see here that they're very sensitive to the moon phases. So they do actively notice that sometimes during new moons, full moons, waxing, waning moons, there are just different cycles that they go through. So they're a very sensitive person who is attuned to their own energy. In making a meal, I see that this is a big part of self-care for your person. Your soulmate is someone who thrives when they eat homemade food. They also really like cooking their own food because they feel like it's a very therapeutic activity and it's also healthiest to do so. That's one thing that I see here within Make a Meal. And your soulmate is someone who appreciates a good home-cooked meal that was made with the vibration of love because everything has a vibration and an energy and it really just hits differently when something is made with pure good intention, especially food, right? You never want your food to be prepared by someone who is in a bad mood or suffering or who doesn't want to be preparing the meal. So next I'm going to move further into your reading with my gorgeous, absolutely stunning below the surface oracle deck. I mean, just look at the gilded edges of these cards and all of the little glittery details on the fronts and the back. I show you the cards, the guidebook, the journal, and the box during the intro of this video. So if you're interested, check it out. And of course, I also have the link to get on the pre-orders list for this deck below because the list is filling up. So during the actual launch in April, I don't know how many pieces will be left of this deck because right now it is a limited edition item. So next up, we've got the ore fish. So the ore fish is representative of the fact that your soulmate is someone who is very kind and they have recognized that their kindness is their strength. They have no issue with being the bigger person. They have no issue with their ego whatsoever. They're someone who is very secure in themselves, who is very confident in who they are. So it's not an issue for them to be the bigger person in a lot of instances where people are maybe being kind of childish or allowing their ego to get the best of them. Within the coconut octopus, I want you to know here that your soulmate is someone who is on the right path for their own goals and aspirations right now. They're moving very quickly towards some big goals that they've set for themselves, some big targets that they're about to hit. And they've gone through the in-betweens, the difficult times, the times where uncertainties were a day-to-day -day thing and were something that couldn't be avoided and just had to kind of be lived through and worked through. And your soulmate is someone who thrives in the unknown. Your soulmate is someone who knows how to overcome adversity. And I see here within the parrotfish that they're very protective over not only their assets, but also people. They're never careless with what they've worked hard for. They're never careless with the people who they love. They're always very, very careful and very gentle with whatever means a lot to them. So especially if they are a larger individual, they're like a gentle giant. They're like a huge teddy bear because it is so important for them, to, for people and their loved ones to feel safe when they're around them. So I want to figure out what letters we've got in your soulmate's name just for some extra divination information. So let's see what spirit has to say for you, my beautiful Capricorns. In case you didn't know, your sign is a feminine one and your lucky numbers are two and eight. Your lucky day is Saturday in case you didn't know. Okay, so we've got a few letters here for your soulmate's name. We've got K. We've got C as well as A. 
So that's what we've got when it comes to their initials and their name, my beautiful Capricorn babies. So this is the reading, or shall I say the second part of your soulmate prediction that I've received for you. I hope that you've enjoyed it and that you found it insightful. Make sure that you leave a little crescent moon emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you were here and that you represent the Capricorn fam and that you watched all the way to the end. Don't forget to, of course, also check out my latest unreleased oracle deck in order to secure your copy that is also linked below i'm sending you so much love my beautiful capricorn babies and i can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming readings hello all of my beautiful aquarius babies and welcome to the second part of your soulmate reading so during part one which you got to choose from during the intro of this video you chose between these four beautiful love potions but now we're gonna talk all things aquarius Aquarius, and we're going to figure out exactly who your soulmate is, their zodiac sign, when you're going to meet them, really all of the nitty gritty details. So lean back, relax, and enjoy this highly personalized prediction I've got for you. So first up, we've got Archangel Michael. So within Archangel Michael, I can see here that your soulmate is a protector. They're someone who will always stand up for you, and they're the type of person who also just likes to give it up to the universe, to God, to their angels, whatever it is that you would like to call it. They don't like to overthink. They simply like to do their best and then let it be because they know that at the end of the day, in a lot of instances, the most that you can do is just to put your best foot forward, right? Is just to try your best. And overthinking or worrying from there on out often is just a waste of time and energy. So if they're, for example, worried about the results of an exam that they just took or how their love life is going to play out, they're going to do their best to make sure that they get the result that they desire but once they've done their best they just let it go they just see what the result is they let it come to them and they don't try to force anything i see here within faith that your soulmate is someone who is very calm they trust in themselves and others so they trust in the good and they trust that also other people will do what's right now have they been burned before yes however they still choose to see the light in the world and they still choose to give people the benefit of the doubt because they understand that's just part of life sometimes people will use and misuse the trust that you've placed in them and their decision making and that's fine but that doesn't mean that everyone is like that and that also doesn't mean that you should become calloused or feel as though nobody is really trustworthy because now that will just prevent you from fully leaning into a relationship and trusting. Next up, we've got Diana. So within Diana, I can see here that your soulmate is someone who expects the best possible outcome. They put focused intention on what they desire, not what they do not desire. So your soulmate is someone who takes manifestation as well as is focused intention very seriously they don't like to just kind of allow themselves to drift around in whichever direction the wind blows them it is important for them that they have goals that they lay out what those goals are and that they go for those goals okay so your soulmate is not someone who just kind of says well everything will be fine First they work, first they put their intention on it, first they put their best foot forward and try their best, and then they let it go and see what the result will be. But that hard work and dedication always comes first. So I see that the month of October, as well as the month of January, these are the two months in which you're most likely to meet your soulmate, my gorgeous Aquarians. I also want to add some numbers into your prediction so we can figure out what days that we are looking at, shall we? So, Spirit, what day in October is Aquarius going to meet their soulmate? Ooh, okay, we've got the 20th for you. Let's just make sure you can see this nice and clearly. There we go. We've got the number 20 for October. Now let's see what number we've got for January spirit. When is Aquarius going to meet their soulmate in January? Okay, we've got the number seven for January. There we go. 
Seven is a very mystical number. Seven is a number that I would say comes with a lot of spiritual connotation as well. Let's move a little further into this reading. Spirit, what else do we need to know about Aquarius soulmate? Please let us let us in on this. Okay, we've got cancer for you. So we've got a water sign that is very sensitive, emotional, has psychic abilities more often than not, and is very family oriented. That's one thing that we've got here within cancer. Let's see if there are other important placements you need to know of. Mm, okay, we've got their sun in Cancer because this is actually the symbol of the sun and we had Cancer before. So when it comes to Aquarius, you are dealing with a Cancer sun. So this is a great combination if you want to start a family with your soulmate. If you want to be in a committed long-term relationship, this is it for you. However, if you just want short-term fun, I want you to know that Cancer is very attached and loyal and that may be rather problematic if you start something like this with a Cancer Sun. So let's move further into your reading to see what your soulmate would say to you if they could tell you about themselves right now. Okay, so this is what your soulmate would them describe themselves as to you. So we've got, I live in truth. That's what your soulmate would say about themselves to you right now, that they live in their truth they say what it is that they believe. They do not believe in adjusting to society's norms and standards if it doesn't feel right or truthful. And they're the type of person who will never back down just because others are saying that, oh, this is not normal or this is strange or this is different. They live their truth regardless. So let's see what else your soulmate would describe themselves as. Your soulmate would say to you right now, I do the best I can. We spoke about that throughout this reading already. So this is really a sign that your guides and your soulmate's angels are here within this reading right now. There is a reason why we've already mentioned this before. And now tying this together with the cards, receiving this extra clear confirmation I mean, it couldn't be any more transparent who your soulmate is and what they're made of, really. They're a very truthful person who puts their best foot forward and then lets it go. The clear quartz shows me that your soulmate is someone who likes clarity in relationships. Not only do they value clarity, but they also like when clear communication is the norm and happens by default. So they don't like when you beat around the bush or when you try to avoid hurting their feelings. They would rather know the truth than be comforted by a lie. That is like their quote and their saying that they live by. The Lepidolite shows me here that your soulmate is someone who can also remember their dreams very frequently. So whenever your soulmate has dreams, they can remember what happened, who was in the dreams. They know all of the details. And keeping a dream journal is most likely also something that they've done or they've been thinking of doing as of recently. So your soulmate is definitely someone who believes in the unseen and the in-between. They're a pretty spiritual person. They're someone who likes to read into intuition and feelings and psychic abilities overall. Ooh, let's see what else we've got. The Three of Pentacles. Now, when it comes to their work, your soulmate is someone who is fantastic at working as a team as well as overall collaborating with other people. That's what I see here within the Three of Pentacles. Furthermore, your soulmate is also someone who likes to spend a lot of time creating businesses with other people and swapping out business ideas. And the Four of Swords shows me that your soulmate also needs a lot of alone time then to think over what they just decided they wanted to do. So your soulmate can be a little bit of a whirlwind when it comes to emotionality. They can be a little bit all over the place, but in a sweet way. So they're not the type of person 
who will blame you for what they're going through emotionally. They're more the person who will think to themselves, okay, I have all of these different options. Some delight me, some make me feel nervous. I need a little bit of time to myself to just figure out precisely what I want to do next. So let's see what your soulmate likes to do for self-care. They like to go outside and take walks. That's what I see for your soulmate, my beautiful Aquarius babies. They like to spend time outdoors. They like to spend time in a place where they can move their body, but not too much, okay? They don't want to be dripping in sweat, but they want to be a little bit active, right? They want to do a little something that is physical. Next up, I can see here that your soulmate also loves to spend time with animals so they may have pets of their own or they may visit a close friend's or family member's pets pretty frequently so they can just spend time in the presence of animals and honestly animals are so healing because you never have to guess what they're feeling or going through. They don't have any ulterior motives. They don't get their feelings hurt the way humans do. I mean there are some cats and dogs I think that you may have seen on the internet or maybe even experience in real life who seem to kind of like get their feelings hurt and let it out on you or ignore you when you do something that they don't like or they feel neglected. But mostly I would say animals don't really play games the way humans do. So let's move further into your reading. I am debuting the Below the Surface Oracle deck in this video, which I'm so excited about. I've been working on this deck for over a year and you can see more of it throughout the intro of this video. The timestamps are below and you can also get on the pre-orders list for this because Honestly, the way the pre-orders list is filling up, I don't know how many I'll actually have left at launch. So next up, we've got the Ambon Damselfish. Now I do see here within the Ambon Damselfish that when it comes to your soulmate, they're not afraid to use their voice. They're the type of person who is very opinionated. And again, they will say how they feel. They want you to do the same for them. They don't like playing games and they don't like any type of uncertainty or people not being clear. Now, in the black tip reef shark, I can see that they also know when to stay in shallow waters. They understand when superficial is enough. There are definitely some individuals with whom they know there's no point trying to start a deep conversation with. And there are also moments, like for example, if they're spending time with their boss, with other people at their firm, that it's best to just remain silent about certain matters and keep their emotions to themselves. Because it's not always good to show all your cards. So this is really about the balance between knowing when to be outspoken, open, and outgoing going and saying what you're going through and how you're feeling and knowing when it's best to just kind of shut off a little bit and be quiet and play the game like everyone else does because especially working for example a nine to five you may have to engage in office politics just in order to get ahead now let's see what we've got when it comes to initials within their name let's see what spirit has for you Okay, we've got a blank rune, we've got Y, as well as C. So the blank rune could represent a special character, for example, and Y and C are kind of self-explanatory. Now let's move just a little further into your reading, my beautiful Aquarians, to see what else we've got in regards to your soulmate. So next up, we've got the cauldron. So I see here that your soulmate is someone who doesn't really have emotional outbursts. They can really keep their emotions at bay and they're the type of person who has their feelings under control. So they're very mature. They've learned how to keep their feelings under control and how to not have like crazy emotional outbursts from time to time because they know that they may just end up saying or doing something that they will regret at a later point in time next up we've got the lord so i do see here that they have strong divine masculine energy that is what rules them mostly they don't have a lot of feminine energy or at least they're not very heavily in it at this point in time 
they do have a caring side. I definitely see that within faith and humanity and benevolence that we've got up here, but mostly they've got divine masculine energy, which gets things done, which initiates things, which makes the first step, okay? So calling you first, texting you first, reaching out to you first, and being the first one to show interest. And I do also want you to know here within this masculine energy that it can be intimidating to some people. So your soulmate is definitely someone where when they enter a room, a lot of people shy away or a lot of people are a little bit afraid. They don't really know what to say. So therefore, when they're in a leadership position, it puts them at risk for people not telling them the full story because they're worried about how they will react. So I do want you to know here that your soulmate is someone who is seen as more intimidating than they truly are by other people. And it could also be because they are pretty good looking. They're the type of person who has features that I would say society praises and who is in a spot where they've got this confident aura, which is something that really makes a person special, right? When you're very confident, when you're sure about yourself, no matter what your features may be or no matter what you may look like, that is really how you not only win people's confidence, but you also kind of strike a nerve often where people think, oh, this person must be competent because they are so confident. That's the type of vibe here that we're getting from your soulmate. Now, all of my beautiful Aquarians, I also want you to know that your lucky places, your lucky cities are actually Moscow, Stockholm, and Buenos Aires. And I want you to know here that your lucky flower is the orchid. Your lucky numbers are seven and one. And your lucky day by default is Wednesday. Just a little bit of extra information about you that you may have not known your sign corresponds towards and that can help you at some point in time. Thank you so much for being here, my gorgeous Aquarians. I really appreciate you. If you've made it all the way to this point of the reading, make sure that you leave a little dog or cat emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you watched all the way to the end of the second part of your prediction. Also, of course, do not forget to check out the Below the Surface Oracle deck to secure a copy for yourself because this is truly a collector's item. And trust me, you will regret missing out on this deck if you don't secure your copy. So thank you for being here and for spending this divine time and space with me. I can't wait to connect with you again during one of my upcoming readings. Hello, my beautiful Pisces babies, and welcome to the second part of your prediction about your soulmate. I hope that you enjoyed part one, where you got to pick from one of the four love potions and groups during the intro of this video, but now we're going to talk all things Pisces in relation to your soulmate. So let's get straight into it, my beautiful Pisces babies. Let's see precisely who your soulmate is, what their zodiac sign may be, when you're going to meet them, just all of the little details that I'm sure you're dying to know. So first up, we've got Diana as well as Mother Mary. So right off the bat, I do see that your soulmate is a very caring type of person. I see that they're a peaceful individual and that they have healed their relationship that they had with their mother. So at some point, they did not have a great relationship with their mother. I see that here with mother mary but they focus their intention on the positives and on loving the parts of their motherly figure that were easier to love and therefore they found a way to overcome some difficulty that they struggled with so they may have had a traumatic childhood or just overall a very challenging time clicking with a parent who may have been absent or may have just not protected them in the way that they really should have but they found a way to forgive and to choose love 
and to focus their intention on the best possible outcome and on what they can do now, now that the trauma or the scarring or the PTSD is here, there's nothing you can do to go back in time to change it. So your soulmate is definitely someone who wants to proactively overcome any challenges that they have been given in this lifetime. And I think we all are a little bit scarred from some aspect of our childhood, whether it be our parents, whether it be bullies at school, whether it just be difficult relationships, even early romantic ones, right? With relatives, with people who we dated. It's just overall, there's so many messed up things in this world really that we all need to kind of deal with and try to work through and make sure it doesn't happen to future generations or we just limit the suffering right so next up we've got magic manifesting as well as the cloak of wisdom so here within magic manifesting i want you to know that your soulmate is someone who is very much focused on their goals if they are dating someone who gets in the way of their goals and aspirations. That's a big no-no for them. They're not going to deal with that. They're not going to do that. It's just overall not a relationship that they want in their life and not one that they're going to keep in their life. Next up within Katumi, I see that your soulmate is someone who is probably a little older than you, who has this maturity and wisdom about them, which also not many people of their age possess. Growing up, they were always described as an old soul. People always expected them to say that they're older than they actually were just because of how calm and collected and mature they've always come across in different situations. So I want to add a little bit of numerology into this reading to figure out just how many years older that your person is. So let's see all of my beautiful Pisces babies. Spirit, how much older is Pisces soulmate compared to them? Okay, we've got two. Spirit, do we need to add much extra years really to Pisces soulmate or are they not that much older? Okay, so we've got seven for you. So two plus seven, that would be nine years. Just overall, they're the type of person who definitely needed more time to mature. So if you've ever met like a man or a woman and they're eight, nine years older than you are, but you seem to somehow, they have like bubbly, fun, young energy, but at the same time, this very attractive maturity and they tell you that, well, they were a completely different person when they were your age. That's one thing that I see for you, Pisces. Your soulmate is someone who is a good deal older than you because they just needed the time to mature mentally. Ooh, okay, we've got July as well as March as the most favorable months for you to meet this soulmate in particular. I also want to figure out what days of this month we're looking at. So Spirit, what day of the month in July is Pisces going to meet their soulmate? Okay, we've got the number three. So on the third day of July... And let's see what we've got here for March. So Spirit, what day is Pisces going to meet their soulmate during the month of March? We've got the number 16. Okay, so you are clearly going to meet your soulmate on the 16th of March or on the 3rd of July. These are the most favorable days when it comes to meeting the significant person in your life. So I also want to look into some placements that may be interesting in their birth chart. Oh, my finger was in the way there. Let's, let's retry this. Okay, so here we've actually got Mercury, and Mercury is the planet of communication. It is the planet of your thinking process. You may have heard of Mercury being in retrograde and everything being challenging during that period of time. So let's see what else that we've got here when it comes to Mercury or what their Mercury placement may be. Ooh, okay, we've got Aquarius here. Aquarius is very logical, very independent, and a little rebellious. This is an air sign. So having this within Mercury shows a high level of intelligence and a high level of understanding overall. 
Okay, we've also got strong Leo energy here. That's one thing that I can see. So strong fire sign energy that brings out a more extroverted part of you and that allows you to just be yourself because you watch your soulmate being themselves, being unafraid, leaning into parts of themselves that others may see as dramatic or overly confident and you see them really rocking the situation. So I do want you to know here that your soulmate is a huge, inspiration when it comes to self-confidence for you. The Golden Healer Quartz shows me that your soulmate is someone who has opened doors for people who will come after them, okay? So they have opened doors that other people have not been able to within their lineage and their family. Maybe they're the first one who has ever started their own successful business, been in a successful relationship, or for example, been able to finish college. The Golden Healer Quartz definitely shows that your soulmate is someone who has done something extraordinary when it comes to the past, when it comes to their lineage and the people who they came from, who they descended from. The agate shows me here that it's important for them to prove a point, to bring things back into balance. So maybe for a long time, their ancestors have been forced to live in a manner that they shouldn't have been forced to live. And your soulmate is someone who wants to turn that around, who wants to not necessarily rectify because there will never be any way to rectify these things, but they want to ensure that things get back into some sort of balance, so to say, and they take a lot of pride in knowing historic events and knowing how certain things happened, especially things that were maybe oppressive and doing it differently in this day and age, finding a way to create more equality and to be a poster child for what you can accomplish if you just believe in yourself and put some confidence behind your words. I see here that for self-care, your soulmate loves to spend time with friends. So if you end up being with your soulmate, you're going to have to get to know their friends and learn to like and love them because you will be spending a lot of time with them. You will be cooking together, watching movies, just hanging out and talking about everything under the sun. But your soulmate will also present you to them in a very loving way how they're uplifting you and kind of hyping you up in front of everyone, which just shows how much they care and how mature that they are because they understand that the way they introduce you will reflect the way that they treat you. The same goes for family. That is another very important thing for your soulmate. They love and care about their family. It's very important to them that they have a close bond with their family and that you too have a good bond with their family members. So that is an area in which they will put a lot of energy and time into because for them, having family and also creating their own family is one of the most important and beautiful parts of their human existence. So if your soulmate were here right in front of you and they had the opportunity to tell you who they are, this is what they would say to you, my beautiful Pisces. They would say, I embrace the all. Your soulmate would say to you that they don't reject anything. They embrace any situation, whether it be a challenging one, whether it be a situation that they always wanted. It doesn't matter, but they embrace every person, every situation, and every learning curve and learning experience that they can get their hands on. What else would they say to you? They would say, I communicate with compassion. Your soulmate is someone who does not use derogatory terms, also not when they're mad or when they're within an argument. They don't do that. They don't put other people down in order to feel stronger, to uplift themselves. Your soulmate is the type of person who finds it important to be respectful with all other human beings and also to just remind yourself at the end of the day, there is nothing so different between you and I and the next person walking down the street. And your soulmate truly believes in that and finds that a very important philosophy to live by. So I am debuting the Below the Surface Oracle deck, you guys, within this video, which I'm so 
proud of. I've been working on this for over a year and I love how it's turned out. It's such a high quality, gorgeous deck that I just can't wait to show you more of in the upcoming readings. So next up, we've got the Bottlenose Dolphin. And within the Bottlenose Dolphin, I do want you to know here that your soulmate is someone who likes to have a good time. They like to celebrate and socialize. They're the type of person who is always invited to some sort of party, gathering, or premiere because they make for a great guest, okay? A lot of people really love having your soulmate around because they just find that they bring really great conversation and energy to the table. Next up, we've got the moray eel. So I see here that your soulmate is someone who is very patient. Your soulmate is someone who isn't afraid to wait for it, okay? Whether that be physical intimacy with you, whether that be a promotion or just doing the next thing in their career, they find that the more patient they are, the more likely things are actually actually going to work out for them because when you've got this impatient energy it's kind of hard for anything to come to fruition because you're constantly getting at it right you're constantly kind of putting the energy out of whack or making everything start from the beginning again just think about it this way if you have a wound for example and you want it to create a scab so it can just overall start to heal so you can start to see a scar forming if there needs to be a scar, right? If you constantly remove the scab, if you constantly interrupt the healing and you're not patient and you can't wait for it, then of course it will never progress. It will never get to that place of healing. And this is something that your soulmate has understood to just leave certain things alone and to give certain things time in order to heal, in order to progress, in order to just in its own time, get to where it needs to go, get to a stage where it's no longer uncomfortable and it's no longer quote unquote bleeding. Let's see what type of letters we've got in your soulmate's name, shall we? So we will intuitively allow for spirit to guide us. Oh, okay, we already have a lot of different letters here. We've got R, we've got A, we've got N, we've got O, okay, Rona. <laughs> And we've got a blank rune as well. Okay, so these are the letters within their name. Another name that we have here is Aaron. It may be spelt differently, but Aaron is how it sounds. And then we've got the blank rune for special characters in their first, middle, or a last name. So this is who we have as your soulmate, my beautiful Pisces. We've got precise dates. We have a name <laughs> that Spirit spelt out for us. And we definitely also have a lot of who they are, where they're going, and the type of personality that you get to look forward to. In case you didn't know, as a Pisces, your lucky day is Friday, and your lucky numbers are two and six. And a great medal for you to wear in case you ever have to choose between like gold, silver, copper, the best thing for you to wear is actually platinum. So my beautiful Pisces babies, I hope that you enjoyed this reading and that you found it interesting and insightful. If you did, of course, do not forget to leave a little balloon emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you were here, that you made it to the end, and that you're a Pisces. Don't forget to secure your copy of the Below the Surface Oracle deck. If you feel like you need any extra information or convincing, I introduce you to the entire entire deck guidebook and journal during the intro of this video so the timestamp to that is in the description box as well so you can take a very close look at what is included within this oracle deck so i'd like to thank you for being here and for spending this divine time and space with me my beautiful pisces babies i'm sending you so much love and i can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming readings